And a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Fremantle Oval. As you can see, a big crowd packing in here. Plenty of atmosphere. Foundation Day Derby. It's always a great match, and today should really be no exception. We estimate the crowd at about 10 to 11,000 at the moment. It could easily build up to 14,000 uh, into the first quarter of this game. The conditions are almost perfect. There's a breeze coming in from the west at five knots. The temperature is 18 degrees, and almost ideal conditions at, at the moment uh, for this South Fremantle, East Fremantle Derby. There's been a couple of changes to the East Fremantle side. Wally Foreman will have them for you in a moment. In fact, East Fremantle have been out on the ground now for about seven or eight minutes. And quite surprisingly, out on the ground very early indeed, and we're still waiting for the South Fremantle side to appear. The umpires for the match are Dave Johnson and Mike Ball. Joining me in commentary, Wally Foreman, Keith Slater, and Ken Casillas. And while this looks like being a very exciting encounter. Oh, I'm sure it will be, Trevor. A very important game. Uh, it's the final game of this round, of course. So let's have a quick look at the Premiership table as it stands going into this game. Um, as you're aware, it's the last game of the long weekend. And uh, Claremont and Subiaco out on top at the moment. But East Fremantle are the third team in this contest for top spot at the moment. So an important game for them. But more importantly, from the competition's point of view, is uh, South Fremantle's position in fifth place. They must win today to stay in touch with the four, and if they're able to do that, then I think we have a five-way contest as far as, or a five-way competition for places in the final four. It certainly looks at this stage as though Swan Districts, West Perth and East Perth are out of contention as far as finals berths are concerned. And your relations are here nice and early, well? Yes, yes, I got them down here on the leash very early. Took a big leash, I can tell you. But, I wonder uh, who's inside that, eh? I don't know, but he's been causing some trouble in amongst the, uh, the, the uh, sharks over there. We're just waiting there. You see the leading goal kickers going into today's game, and that won't change because Neil Lester-Smith, the only player up the top there, uh, is still under suspension. The South Fremantle come out onto the ground, led out by their champion centreman, Morris Rioli, and there you see the sign turn the tables and we'll explain that for you in just a moment but it is going to be a very interesting game this and uh, certainly the biggest crowd we've seen in a league football match so far this season that's what's uh, Rioli got on his boot, well, sorry what's Rioli got on his boot heavily strapped his boot it's probably just an old one you see Morris Rioli just picking up the football on the right front of that pack and we'll come back and have a look at Morris's footwear in a few moments time if we can just have a look at the goal kickers again though You'd see uh, that Bremen, McDougall, Melesso and Ray are the top four in the goal-kicking list at the moment. If we can have another look at them. And uh, it's been a tough weekend as far as goal-kickers are concerned. Bremen kicked only three on Saturday. McDougall only got two. Melesso didn't get one and Ray only got two. So uh, if that's any omen, it's going to be a tough afternoon this afternoon also as far as uh, the league's leading goal scorers are concerned. But as I mentioned, Neil Lester-Smith, the only player from uh, this game or from either club involved in this game that could uh, change the order there, but he won't be able to do that because he's serving out a, a two-week suspension. Past performances between these two teams, and probably uh, historically and traditionally, they've played out some of the great games in the West Australian National Football League, as it was for so long, and now the WAFL. South Fremantle have won 118 of the 281 contests. East Fremantle won 159 of them. Four draws, and uh, this looks like being a very even contest too. I doubt uh, that anyone would be game enough to predict a draw, but uh, some great games played between the two clubs over a long, long period of time. And in the game that was played earlier this year, East Fremantle emerged victorious, winning by 13 points back on April the 16th. Well, there's the South Fremantle side, so let's have a look at uh, a probable lineup as far as they're concerned. And unfortunately for South Fremantle supporters, the worst fold you see down the bottom is Peter, not John. The Eagles, I believe, have ruled John ineligible to play today or have uh, prevented him from playing, and uh, so he won't take his place in this game. What do you think of that, Keith Slater? Yes, well, I thought they could have allowed him to play today if he's, uh, he's certainly fully fit and he's been out through suspension. And with the, you can't have a better training run than playing in a game. That's the best possible training run. It's not wet. The conditions are absolutely superb. And uh, I really am very surprised that he's not allowed to play here this afternoon. OK, they're coming across for the toss of the coin, but if we can just have another quick look at that South Fremantle side, you'll see that uh, they've got an all-Aboriginal centre line, which is a little bit unusual, and uh, certainly plenty of skill and talent there. And the three Collard brothers back in the side, playing in the same side together, and I don't think we've seen three brothers play in the same league side uh, since the Hebbards played for West Perth back in the 60s, Colin, Robert and uh, Neville. 
Now, Morris Rioli coming over, and uh, Clinton Browning is already there, the opposing captains this afternoon. And uh, after the toss of this coin, we'll have a look at the East Fremantle side. But let's just get the toss because uh, it's going to be very, very important, I would think. A good start from South's point of view in particular is essential. Browning has won the toss and he's elected to kick to the northern end of the ground. It won't favour, the breeze is not favouring either end at the moment, but uh, the forecast is that it could come from the northwest, so that means that East Fremantle would kick with it in the last quarter. Very quickly, the East Fremantle side this afternoon, and you'll see two significant changes. Grace and Rankin are out, but they get back two pretty talented footballers in Jep and Edgar, and we're suggesting that Jep might go to the back pocket, Edgar onto the half back line. Now that's a pretty competent side, and if they can get their act together and play as a team, then uh, I would think, Keith Slater, that they're going to take some stopping this afternoon. Yes, they have the edge on experience, even though they have a very new look, inexperienced centre line, and that's interesting. Quill, Cooper and Miller. A lot of talent there though, Keith. Yes, there is, but a lot of inexperience by the same to the token. And uh, uh, Cooper, he's come a long way, hasn't he, from Geraldton. He'll be playing uh, maybe on the best opponent he's ever played on today, and Morris Rioli. And uh, the result of that, uh, his performance there could have a big bearing on this game. What about the clash of Sterrett and Sam Bradley? Do you see that as being possibly uh, one of the highlights of the day? If Sterrett can get on top there at centre-half forward, South Fremantle could be in a bit of bother. Well, I'm a big rap for Sterrett. He's one of the strongest men playing league football. He has enormous skills. And uh, Sam Brailo is also a very good player. Not as experienced as Sterrett, but uh, still a very good player. And uh, Sterrett will need to be right on his game. His ball handling will have to be first class. Otherwise, this man, Sam Brailo, will be right on him. But the last time we saw South Fremantle, Trev, we were most disappointed in their effort. And, it'll, and since then, they have improved. Whether they can withstand the pressure of today's game, who knows? A lot of the players playing in their first pressure game uh, in, their, in their careers, some of them. And it will be a pressure game today because we have, what, uh, 10, 12,000 people here, Ken? At least. And uh, that really does uh, make for a very good game of footy at Fremantle Oval. Keith, uh, butting in for a moment, talking about the Sam Brailo Sterrett clash, I don't think it's going to be on because Sam brailo has gone to centre-half forward for South Fremantle. And uh, trying Sumich. to pick up who's going to play centre-half back. No, Sumich is going to play on the flank. He's on the flank, half-forward flank. Bayless. Bayless will probably go at centre-half back. I, I think, think it might be Ditchburn. So, Ditchburn. while the players sort themselves out... Ditchburn a left foot. Bayless it is. Bayless it is. It's umpire ball to get the match underway here. The Derby at Fremantle Oval. Up they go. Baxter wins the tap. Wide of the pack. Coming in is Brad Collard. With him is Bushel. They're wrestling at ground level. And that'll be another bounce just outside the centre circle. Tremendous atmosphere for this game. Or an awkward bounce from Ball. Favours Broadbridge. He tried to get it to Miller. It comes back to Cooper. He drives East Fremantle around the boundary line towards Peak. Up with him is Ditchburn. They force the ball close to the boundary line. And the umpire has picked out a kick. <laughs> oh, and he's got the 50. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's unfortunate, isn't it? Well, Peaky, uh, that's his best acting performance of all time. It's a, it's a big 50. Stuff. It's a ridiculous 50. I tell you what, it's uh, that would rival one of Bob Johnson's years ago. Well, you like that one, Ken? That was a huge one, wasn't it? <laughs> Bob Johnson was a past master at that. Uh, well, game. that would rival Bob Johnson. I'd well, like to get on in age a bit. You've got to come up with a few tricks, and the yeah. bomber would have a million stored away. That may have been one of them. Yeah, I'd like now to be marking out my real estate. He's 30 metres out on a 45-degree angle. He's got a great chance to bring up the first goal of the Derby. The kick's on its way. It's close. It's full points. East Fremantle on the board. Peaks kicked the goal in the first minute of play from a 50-metre penalty. East Fremantle one goal. South yet the score. And uh, apart from the players today, you know, we have two of our very best umpires playing today. Uh, umpiring today, the uh, most experienced and maybe the best umpires in the state. In Mike Ball himself, a VFL umpire, umpire now, and a very good one. And David Johnson, uh, a wealth of experience there. So this game should be an absolute cracker. Well, a shaky start for that umpire then. Two mistakes. One he got conned by Peak and one he couldn't measure out 50 metres. There's the bounce down. Edwards and Baxter doing battle. Ineffective ruck play. Bushel in on top of it. And we'll have another bounce down in the centre of the ground. I suppose the question, Wall, is can Guy Baxter continue his good form? He did so well against Subiaco, didn't he? He took yep. Cocker right out of the game. Important that he does well this afternoon. Again, ineffective ruck play. But Broadbridge, Broadbridge read that beautifully. He gets it on to Sterrett. This could be another one. He's only 45 metres out. What a start by East Fremantle. He's just missed to the left. I thought Baxter did pretty well then. It was an even go, but he got it the way he wanted it to go, and Edwards didn't, so we'd have to give the marks there to Guy Baxter. Helicopter hovering above us, and use helicopter as 
Wilson brings the ball back into play for South Fremantle. What a magnificent kick. Sam Brelo led from centre-half forward to a vacant centre-half back. Took the mark on his chest. This is Rioli. He's able to get rid of Cooper. The hand pass infield to Waters. He'll have to hurry. Now, South Fremantle had the chance Play. to go forward for the first time oh. in this game. Worsfold didn't want that. He's tapped at the advantage of Sam Brelo again, but he's put it out on the full under pressure from Waterman. Peter Worsfold should have done a lot better. Yes, he should have. He could easily have taken the mark then. He was going back with the flight of the ball, and he wasn't to know what danger was approaching, but, in fact, there was none. But you've got to know how to look after yourself going for that type of ball. You've got to go for it. East from Adela 1-1, Souths are yet to Whoa. score. I think that's McLean who's gone down under a very heavy tackle. Now Sullivan. Cooper, O'Sullivan no, it is, yes. Now he's called a play on as Collard came to claim him. It was uh, Amoroso who hit him, or who cleaned him up. But South still have a chance to go forward now as the kick goes down from Grant towards the forward pocket. Gee, Sam Raylo's covering some ground. It's knocked back in towards the pocket. Collard is there, that's Cliff Collard. And the East from Adela defence has been oh putting it out on full and we've been talking about this yep. week after week and finally decision, someone has been penalised and it's Cliff Collard who will have the shot at goal. Yes yeah, it was. David Johnson right on the job and he's uh, spelled out the precedent already. Don't knock it out of bounds, you're going to be penalised. Very acute angle. Not a very good effort from Cliff Collard. Far too shallow with the kick. One point results, the margin is six points. Shane Ellis waiting for the umpire to finish waving the flag. Brings it around the members' wing. Target is Broadbridge. Trying with Worsfold with a big fist. It's in the right full forward pocket. Broadbridge swooping onto it. He's close to the boundary line. Hand passes back to Quill. South Fremantle left him unattended. And he boots him out of trouble. Up along the wing position. This is Cooper. He's a brought down to the free behind. kick to Cooper. Should be a free kick to Cooper. He was interfered with from behind. Mike Ball missed that. Uh, interestingly, then, that ball was kept in play by East Fremantle. Well, it's Bayless with the free kick. The ball went out on the full. Goes for the short pass, and the mark has been accepted on the wing by Sam Brelo. He's taking his time, Sam Brelo. A lot of chirping out there. The players are really pumped up. Want to be in it. Very casual approach. Kicks to centre-half forward. Bayless almost the mark. In fact, he's pulled it in. Coming down from centre-half back, Trev. Almost did a changing, the centre-half forward and centre-half back. They, they want to be in the game while they're as keen as mustard, the players. He's the attacking side of the square. He'll set this up right in the, uh, the square in front of goal. It's just outside. Flying down there is Waterman. At the back, Amoroso. Edgar, now it comes towards Derricourt. He bounces off Pollard. It goes Amoroso. It's tied up just outside the square. Scrambly footy. Kick to south, is it? No, it'll be a bounce. Well, Collard and Johnson. Well, Collard got it around the neck. It was pretty hectic. Umpires letting it flow. Baxter doing the ruck work with him as Gatti. Baxter to the side of the pack. It's close to the boundary line. In the left full forward pocket, Edgar runs it out. A boundary throw in. Great atmosphere here. Big crowd watching play. And the stage set for a very exciting match. I think South are kicking with the breeze. Their kicks are carrying a long way, aren't they? It's blowing into that pocket where the ball is at the moment, Keith. Baxter wins it to the front of the pack. Edgar over the top. Coming through strongly, the big fellow Baxter. Clears it away towards half-back. The mark is taken by Cooper, and that was a clever finger-tipper. He puts it down towards centre-half forward, where Peak uses his body well on Ditchburn and leads back in the race for the ball. A very open forward line, but a shocking kick by the bomber. He kicked the and ground. it's knocked back towards the centre of the ground, where it's taken by Edwards. Edwards down to the half-forward line, a well-weighted kick. Bushel got there belatedly. The mark has been taken for Souths. Amoroso. By Amoroso. They're a pretty aggressive forward line at the moment. Miller. Now Miller with the ball at centre-half back for East Fremantle. The wind's making it difficult for the players to kick the ball correctly at this stage. Waterman had a quick look to see who was coming, realised he had plenty of time and played on easily. Over the half-forward line they go, down in the direction of Browning, and that's a strong mark taken by Clinton Browning. Played on quickly with that hand pass to Broadbridge. He gets it back to Browning. Solid tackling by Ditchburn in there has allowed South to bring the ball away. Good hand pass to Edwards. Edwards' hand pass to Waters was a shocker, but he was able to get it away. That was an even worse one. In the head. Cooper, I think, was blinded by the sun. Edwards again with a hand pass when he could have kicked it. This is uh, Sam Brelo. There's still a defensive side of the centre line, South. He took a long time to kick it down to the half-forward line where Collard was giving away a lot of height to McLean. It's picked up by Cliff Collard. 
goes across the top looking for his brother, but this man had come in to save the day, put it back towards the half back line. It's a chance here. Holding the ball, ball. almost. tackled by Collard. Collard then goes back and thumps it clear of the pack with good football. McLean gets his boot to the ball and puts it back towards centre wing, but Amoroso is there to take the mark again. Amoroso gets back to the centre. Looking for leads down the field. South penetrating the centre half forward. It's all East Fremantle. Three players up and the mark to O'Sullivan. Much talking there, Keith. Sullivan is the player. There's the kick towards centre half forward. The target is Browning at the back ditch burn. No mark taken. Weight of numbers will win out. Peak handles it on for Ellis. He's right down the ground. He's run inside 50 metres. Bayless missed him. On to Sterrett. Gets around Mascos. Brilliant football by Sterrett and drills it. Great play by the East Fremantle centre half forward. He's a player of rare class, and that was a great piece of play by Sterrett to bring up goal number two. So South have done all the attacking. East Fremantle have got it on the board. 2-1 plays one behind. A little bit more experience out there for there's Peak waving it on. Ellis has come right down from fullback. Has the ball in control. And a beautiful sidestep. Over it goes to Sterrett. Another sidestep gives him an open run at the goal. Lovely kicker of the football race, Sterrett. Well, the breeze quite definitely has swung to the northwest already, which means that Souths are kicking with it in this first quarter. And as yet, they haven't kicked a goal. We're nine minutes into the term. Rioli sends them forward. Uh, the Sambrello was had to commit himself to that because there were two players there. One of them, Edgar, looked as though he's going to take the mark easily. Sambrello's given away the free kick. I was surprised he dropped it. He appeared to be going full-blooded for it. Edgar back towards the centre of the ground is not a good kick. Amoroso. How many kicks so far in the match, Amoroso kick? Nasty one in the back then. Third mark to Tony Amoroso, and this will be his third kick. Mark Sambrell has had four kicks already. Peter Worsfold is on one leg and has been since the opening minutes of this game, and I'm surprised they haven't done something about it. He's hobbling around there at, uh, on the half-forward line as East Fremantle bring it out of defence again, back into the centre. No one's quick kicking with any great degree of care, but the ball runs to Cole. Chance for East Fremantle now. Sterrett went without it, but he's got plenty of time. Back comes Mascos, got to him just in the nick of time. The ball ricochets, another chance here for Jurak. He's claimed, now Sterrett. South Fremantle defence is closed. They're able to tidy it up a little bit. Bayless, that was reckless. As a result, Jurak can go in on top of Mascos and hold things up inside the East Fremantle half-forward line. Well, Sterrett could have saved all that with a clean pickup. Yes, and Bayless could have done better for South, but certainly Sterrett had the first chance. You think Bayless is the man for Sterrett, Keith? I don't think he'd be I quick enough, enough you, to comment, to be quite honest. This is Wilson. See, they're in strike oh. back there. Ditch burn that was that was caught. Bushel in turn gets the ball wide of the pack, and another one develops. So we'll have another bounce down about 30 metres out from the East Fremantle goal. Big guy Baxter is lurking across the centre of the ground, one kick behind the game. Tim Jepp, so he's been in a good paddock for a while. 11 minutes gone, Edwards with him is Durak, palm to Waters. Waters goes towards half back, worst fold, up with him is Quill. He's a clever Shepard. player, he's just outside 50 metres, look at the pass. Brilliant foot pass from Quill, he's a very clever footballer and he's hit Bushel on the chest. 35 to 40 metres out alongside the boundary line in the left full forward pocket. Lovely shepherd there from young Dean Cole. I'm impressed with that young man. There's the kick from Bushel. That's not bad either. It's just going across the face. The flyer was browning and it's one behind only. A little bit steadier in the forward line at the moment, Ishimano. A little bit more blocking, a little bit more assistance for each other. Hits a couple of goals on the board. Now, this is a player you've been impressed with, Keith Wilson. Dean Wilson for South Fremantle. Yes, he's been around a while. He's a good fullback, Dean Wilson. Gives his all. They break across the half back line. Players going in all directions. And that, to me, that confuses the fullback. Ball kick into play. Edwards, he is confronted there by uh, Browning. Comes towards uh, Amaranti to Miller. His kick is blanketed by Fitzpatrick. Weighted numbers will win out here for South Fremantle. Fitzpatrick goes around the boundary line. Coming through strongly is Collard. He's pushed in the back by Edgar. Picking it up now is Miller. Hand passes on to Sterrett. He's at right half forward. Shakes the tackle. Can't tackle. break that one though of Fitzpatrick. Play on the call. It's just outside 50 metres. Picked up again by Miller. Coming in now is Waters. He got a high tackle. The boundary umpire is going to throw it in 50 metres out from goal. Player heard over there, Trev. Trainers signalling pretty strongly. East Fremantle, they want a stretcher, in fact, and it looks like a South Fremantle player. It's a leg injury, I think. Amoroso. Amoroso, gee, he's been in all sorts of strife uh, in this first quarter. 
and it looks as though it's quite serious strife now, which would be a real blow. Obviously a serious leg injury uh, sustained there by Tony Amoroso. Now they're going to let play go on. It's just that Souths are taking plenty of time as they have uh, from the outset. It's almost as though they've been told to do things in a steady manner in this first quarter. And this time it's worked as the stretcher wins its way through the traffic in the centre of the ground. Now Collard puts the ball up towards the half forward line. Waters has taken a good mark in front of the pack. Cliff Collard works the ball around the half forward line. They need a goal and here's their chance to get it. That's Grant. It's been done by Servich, it is. He's knocked out of his hands. And the 50 metre penalty is going to be imposed, which will certainly bring up South Panel's first goal. Well, the umpires have uh, taken firm control of this game. The first thing that happened was they awarded a free kick when the ball was knocked out of bounds. That, that, that doesn't look too good at all to me. Uh, Let's just watch this goal. It's an important one for Souths. It'll be their first. Sumich has got it. They move to 1-1. East Fremantle at 2-2. 14 minutes gone. And so is Tony Amoroso. Yep. And he doesn't look too good at all. I think it's an ankle. We'll uh, find out as soon as we can what's wrong with Tony Amoroso. And he batted today at the side too after a And he was playing injury. very well, I might add. He was almost South's best player. But really? getting onto the umpires, they've taken firm control. The first ball that was knocked out of bounds deliberately, they penalised. And there's already been two 50-metre penalties, one to either side. And uh, by those decisions, the umpires have taken firm control. And I applaud that. And they're going to hold up play while Amoroso leaves the ground. Gee, I hope his leg isn't broken, but it didn't look good at all. There's a bit of panic from the trainers, Trev. And in fact, it was an East Fremantle trainer who got there first. And uh, that's the trainer's uh, mode these days, isn't it? It doesn't matter who's injured. Now you can see his left leg. That was the reason why he's been out of football. I think it was a, is it a cardial ligament? Medial. A medial ligament, I'm sorry. He got cardies on the brain. Well, <laughs> trying to get it off slowly. He's got his ligaments and his cartilages. Mr. Well, the medial ligament had gone in that left leg. And uh, he's had the operation done back today. And unfortunately, now it's his right leg. We might be able to get a close-up uh, of that injured leg. Tony Amoroso departs. Yeah, it's, uh, the knee is covered with a towel. And, uh, it's certainly his right leg that's uh, the problem. And I'd say he's going straight to an ambulance for the look of it. Oh, here we go. Yes. Bounce in the centre. Edwards wins the tap. It comes to Browning, though. He gets through the traffic. He's kicked smothered by Waters. Going in strongly, worse fold. At ground level is Collard. He tunnel balls at the Rioli. He's tackled by Browning. Kick didn't go anywhere. Punched away now by Quill. This is Cole. Right centre wing for the Sharks. They can go somewhere now, the Sharks. The kick towards full forward. Out comes Durak. Punched away by Wilson. Into the path of Peak. Left foot on goal by the Bomber. Is away to the right hand side. And through for the minor score only. Apparently he did go to the club rooms by the back door. Some of these younger players are starting to perform well for East Fremantle. Quill, Cole, very impressive players. Wilson, big pack at centre half back. Now they split. He goes to the outer side of the ground. The target is Ditchburn. Jumping up in front of him was Cole, comes to Ditchburn. Sweeping hand pass. Collard onto his brother Brad. He's at left centre wing for South Fremantle. There's the pass on the half volley. Wasn't picked up cleanly by Geary. He does well though, recovered well. Kicks down to the edge of the square. Down there is in the pack. South Fremantle player in Gaddy. Spoiled by Ellis. Gaddy a hand pass. Sumich! Brilliant snapshot off the left foot by Peter Sumich. His second goal. South's second goal. Then 2-1. East Fremantle 2-3. And we've been playing 17 minutes. And this derby at the moment has got everything. Pete. Yep. And the South starting to settle. And Gaddy, that's the big guy there. Lovely handball accommodating Sumich. He's a left footer. Wheels onto the left foot. But Gaddy in the pack doing very well for a guy who's about six foot six. Leading kick it is to this point of the match, Ken. Three kicks to Quill on a wing, three to Cooper in the centre for East Fremantle. Scott Waters for South has had three, Peak has had three, and Mark Sambrella, centre half forward for South has had four. Sterrett at centre half forward for East Fremantle. He's had three as Rioli gets it out of the centre. Chance here for Amaranti. He was knocked off the ball by Collard. Coming in as Miller. Collard with superior strength is able to get possession of the ball. Play goes on. Still the umpires let it go. It comes back into the pack towards Waters. Waters did well for Souths. He's back on the half-back line. Now they're out number two oh, in yes. contest, but that doesn't matter because Sam Prelo, a very committed player this afternoon, running hard, tackling hard, pulls down a good mark. He goes to centre-half forward in Edwards, and he'll hold the mark. On the far too tall uh, for Edgar, but he had the sun to contend with and the fact that he was camped under the ball. They were coming at him from all directions. 
So he did pretty well, and Souths have steadied here. A chance for them to bring up another score, but it comes to the front of the pack and Broadridge. He kicks it straight back to Sam Brelo. He's going to get burnt at the moment. He Bob. is. Now he wants players to run past him, but they're very slow. Terrible hand pass, in fact, because it was telegraphed. And as a result, O'Sullivan applied, Sullivan, I'm sorry, applied the tackle, and now they take it away. It was O'Sullivan, wasn't it? It's Grace, it's... McLean. Sorry, McLean, who gets yep. the ball across to a teammate, and it finishes up with Durack, just inside 50 metres. Durack will get the distance from here, I would think, and he decides to kick before the pack assembles. He's just missed to the right. Now, it'll be interesting to see if they assemble at centre-half back for South, as uh, they have been doing over the last, or over this weekend. And I believe uh, the reason for that is that Robert Walls conducted a one-and-a-half-hour coaching session for coaches after the Carlton game last week. And he, that's Peak, I think, who's taken that mark. He explained why Carlton did it. And uh, he said he didn't mind sharing the tactic with anyone because they've perfected it. And if anyone else can do it better, then, well, good, then good on them. The ball goes into centre-half forward. Durack, in fact, knocked it forward. Sterrett is dispossessed by Rioli. Pretty solid stuff in there as players from both sides go in solidly. Eventually it comes wide of the pack. It's knocked forward by Peak, but he couldn't control it. Broadbridge gets it back towards Peak. Peak. Now Bushel. Bushel in towards full forward and Browning. It's knocked away from him well, but Browning follows it up strongly and will get a shot at goal. Doesn't carry. Chance for Amarandi. Off the ground. And another one to East from that. No, it's touched. Oh, heavens above, I'd like to see that again. Oh, big decision. Yes, it looked as though the hand, the hand went out all right, but it looked to be very high up the player's leg. Amarandi's been deprived of the goal, so if he's from Antle, 2-5 to 2-1. Let's have another look at it. And, uh, well, only the umpires will know as yeah. the ball is out, a free kick here to each and Antle. South making a few mistakes in defence. Right, Amarandi kicking to the edge of the square. Durak. Oh, Knocked away at the last it. moment by Wilson. It comes to Sterrett. Snapshot by Sterrett, though, is out on the full in the right full forward pocket. The tell you what, to give those soccer tactics away, Trev. That's twice he's missed. These Shimel are doing pretty well here. You know, they're kicking into a fairly stiff breeze for mine. And uh, they're doing their equal share of attacking. McDonald from the last line of defence towards half-back. Edwards Broadbridge pushed him in the back. Oh, that's a good mark. Oh, rubbish. Good mark. I'd like to see that again. Well, you can see it as many times as you like. It was a good mark. Mark, all right. You pushed him in the back, do he? Yeah, you're allowed to use your feet, Trev. Wilson got a push in the, in the back as well. That was a push. Play on. He got a high tackle, Bayless. And at last is a free kick. Bayless goes out wide. Puts it out in front of Worsfold. He tries to hug the boundary. Beautifully played. Keeps it in. Well played. He's now tackled by Bushel. Forced the hand pass away. Only as far as Cooper. He boots it back towards left half forward. Chance for Sterrett. With him as Mascos. Nice turn by Sterrett, sweeping hand pass to Bushel, 40 metres out, right foot drop punts away to the right hand side with Jurak. Oh, he's he paid the mark. He's been paid the mark. Oh, you've got to do better than that on a day like this. Well, I would have paid it. I thought he held it long enough. We'll have another look in a minute, but you'll find he held that long enough. Durack in the right full forward pocket. Tries to make space. Banana kick. He might have kicked that. Oh, that's a great kick from Durack. Controversial mark. But there were quite a few decisions there while that could have gone either way. And it's finished Let's have up a look at the mark, Trev. a goal to East Fremantle. Let's have a look at the mark, Trev. There's the big fella, Durack. Looking for the goal post. Come He's got a pretty out. fair grab on that. Oh, he, carried it, he carried it right to the ground, I might add. He did no doubt at all. I'm sorry, you won't get the argument. At no doubt at all. 3-5 East from Antle, 2-1 South from Antle. Ten points in favour of the Sharks as Baxter goes up and gets it down to, to Amaranti. His hand pass is intercepted by Worsfold. Now Geary for South. That's a terrible kick. Sam Brelo, who's marked everything so far this oh. afternoon, is outmarked by Sumich. It wasn't Sam Brelo either, it was Edwards, I'm sorry. Zumich. It's a pretty good kick too, it's got good distance, well off line, it's gone out of play on the full. Well, there's been uh, four good marks uh, worthy of mark of the quarter in this quarter so far. This is Derek Court for East Fremantle. It's been a typical start to a derby, there's been uh, no shortage of physical commitment by players from either side. That's Gatti getting his hand to the ball and his opposite number was Broadbridge. 44 for East Fremantle. 
plenty of commitment in the broadcasting box there. <laughs> <laughs> if it gets any more physical, I'll be bowing out, I can assure you, Chief. You're too big for me. This is Baxter and Gatti doing battle. Locked in an arm wrestle there. Broadbridge has it. Gee, he started well for East Fremantle. Back towards centre wing. Baylor's backed his judgment as he really had to. Waters tried to tap and further afield. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't. It comes down to Amaranti. See that kick then? He kicks the centre half forward. Up at the back was Wilson. This is Ditchburn. He broke the tackle from Browning. He's got nowhere to go, though. He had Wilson in support, fortunately. Now Beautiful. they've got two players loose on the half forward line, half back line. Bayless is far too slow. Far too slow to be playing there. Any centre half back worth his salt would have marked that ball. Yep. He couldn't control it. They'll get into difficulty there because Stewart will run him around all day. Stewart's had five kicks already, too. Again, Gatti gets the ball to the side of the pack and Geary takes it nicely. Hand passes on to Rioli. Closing on him is Broadbridge. The hurried kick into the centre of the ground. There's no one there. Coming to meet it is Collard and with him Baxter. Collard did very well but didn't tap it far enough. Geary again was held but not in possession and he'll get the free kick. East Fremantle 3-5, 23 south at 2-1-13 and that's 23 minutes into this first quarter. And a good opening to this Foundation Day Derby here at Fremantle Oval. Man with the famous name, Richard Geary. Scotty Waters in the middle of the ground. Runs to the attacking side of the square. Look at the pass! And on the end of it, long, lanky Grant. Excuse my ignorance, what's famous about Richard Geary? Shouted famous to me. <laughs> He's got a lovely, uh, lovely skills, hasn't he, Scott Sorry, Waters? I I was the of it. Richard Absolutely. Gear, the film star. Oh, Richard Gear. It's close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trick me. Grant from centre half forward, just forward of the 50 metre line. Drop punts on its way, that looks good. Full points for South Fremantle. They've played a very good first quarter. Four goals won the Southerners. East Fremantle at 3 5, and we've played 24 minutes into this first term. There he is, Grant, a very promising player. He won't see many, he won't get many better passes than that one. Scott Waters, a very skilled player, and a real daisy cutter pass straight down the middle of the ground, and carried about 35, 40 metres. Perfectly accommodating Grant. The South uh, needed to kick that one. They're kicking uh, with whatever breeze is out there. It's a strong one. It's across but not the ground, too, Keith. Mm -hmm. It's across the ground. Well, if you watch the way the ball's carrying, it's carrying a lot further that end. Oh, nice throw. Torrid passage of football in the centre of the ground. Chance now for Waters, who's starting to figure prominently in this game, as is this player, Geary. He kicks over the half forward line. Another chance here for South. They've got some height down there. No one able to pull the mark in, however, and as a result, East Fremantle bring it away. Back towards centre wing. And uh, Shepherding. Shepherding against O'Sullivan. Quill was the player who dropped the mark. O'Sullivan's been penalised for Shepherding when the ball was more than five metres away. Is that right, Keith? Correct. I wasn't I Correct to see him. Yeah, he was deliberately Shepherding. Sumich has it now. Back to centre half forward where Edwards is unattended. Derricourt closes. That's 50 metres for mine. Oh! Heavens above, that was uh, unnecessary. It's done no damage, but there was no intent in his mind as far as the ball was concerned, Derricourt. It's always a tough one for a player, isn't it, for the, uh, when he's running with the flight of the ball. What makes the player ready yeah. to take the mark? You can't with it. It's a no-win situation. What makes it tougher, Trevor, is the, is the size of the penalty these days. I'm sure if there had still been a 15-metre penalty available, it would have been applied then. Doesn't matter, Edwards has got the goal. And South Fremantle are in front, much to the delight of this big crowd here at Fremantle Oval. They've got all their major sponsors and hierarchy here today. I believe Alan Bond is in attendance. And entourage. And certainly at the moment, they're turning it on for all of them. 4-1 to 3-5, the Bulldogs lead. Yep, and I reckon Derek Court had to keep going. If he hadn't kept going, he might have been dropped from the side. He had to try and do something. And uh, Edwards, uh, you can't put up on a thrumpy bit. There was no elbows or knees or anything. He just ran into Edwards. He stood his ground. He's tough and uh, a good goal. Umpire Johnston bounces down. Gaddy, Durak comes to Geary. Now Rioli's been fairly quiet in this first quarter. What are his stats, Ken? Rioli's had two ineffective kicks and one hand pass. Cooper playing on him has had four kicks. This is Miller, another talented East Fremantle player, out wide for Bushel. Brad Collard closing, Bushel plenty of time, hugs the boundary line, Bomber juggles the mark and pulls it in, in time. He's done all right out there, hasn't he, Peak? This will be his fifth kick opposed to John Ditchburn, and Ditchburn's got his hands full. He sets it up, looking for Broadbridge or Browning, flying with Wilson to the front of the pack, Bushel a quick kick, it's bouncing Goldwood, just the wrong side of the post, minor score only. South Fremantle 4-1-25, East Fremantle 3-6-24, 
And we've played a minute and a half of time on. Really windy conditions. And uh, Bayless picks out Geary. Uh, Geary's come into the game very strongly in the last 10 minutes. Goes for the hand pass. Through centre half back, McDonald back himself. Ran his full measure, then kicks towards Sam Brelo. Oh, vice like grip by the big fellow. He's running O'Sullivan around, Ken Casillas. Yeah, that's his fifth mark. Mark Sam Brelo, five marks. This will be his sixth kick. And his opponent, John O'Sullivan's had two marks and two kicks. A kick towards full forward and Grant. Oh. Another good pair of hands. If these two start to fire at centre half forward and full forward, South could be in for a very good day. It's a marking stream cut forward. Not only has Sam Brelo taken five marks, Grant's taken three, and Sumich has taken three, and Craig Edwards has taken two in the forward line. Best marking we've seen all year. He's outside 50 metres, and it'll take a prodigious kick. It's on its way, it's away to the right-hand side. Edwards is up at the back. Oh, what a great mark over Jurak. He's going for the short pass. Just outside the square, it was a poor kick from the big fellow. Coming in his gutty, he's dispossessed. Umpire's whistle sounded. He's taking it right back to Edwards telling him he has to kick over the mark. Thank you very much, says Craig Edwards. Oh, I'll say. <laughs> and South it's a bonus. <laughs> they well, lost possession. He deserved better, didn't it? There you see the ambulance for Tony Amoroso. Yes, they haven't got far to take him. Let's hope he's OK. It's, it's really bad. serious as we think. Looks like a broken leg. Edwards left foot on its way. I think he's missed. One behind only. That was really a great mark. We've seen some brilliant marking in this first quarter. Oh, outstanding. I've got to pick the mark of the day. I've uh, changed five times already. I'm not sure whether Sumich or Edwards is... Uh, and Mark Ambrello keeps taking two beauties. Yep. Kick into play by Shane Ellis. We're into time on, well into time on in this first quarter. And another mark claimed out there. And I think it's Edwards again. No, it's Gabby yeah. this time. Gee, their big man strength is really to the fore here. Yes, Ideal conditions, of course, for marking. Yep. Only a light breeze. A good cloud cover, too, which sort of uh, nullifies the effect of the sun, if you like. And Sambrello's done the right thing. He's gone back towards the top of the square. And the mark play on is the call. Worsfold has it. Shrugs one tackle. Back on the left foot. And Rioli will shoot from about 45 metres out. Who better? Who better? Especially at this time of the quarter. It, it won't be a long quarter. Only seven goals kicked between the two teams. And we're moving towards the 31-minute mark of the term. So Morris Rioli has the opportunity here to give Souths an eight-point lead. Wouldn't that be handy at quarter time? There goes the kick from Morris. It's close. It's through. It's a goal. Souths have their fifth. They're 5-2. He's from Adel at 3-6. South Janelle have really settled down the latter part of this quarter. We've seen their big men get on top all over the ground. And, uh, of course, Geary has done well at ground level. They're blowing their own weapons now, South, aren't they? And uh, Gatti and Edwards doing extremely well. We've seen Sam Brelo at centre-half forward. He's really alive today. And uh, Grant with a couple of lovely passes going into him. But the big man's strength is setting this up for South. You liked that, didn't you? Oh, I loved it. You keep talking, Keith. Jurak. Rioli threw his hands, but he's got the skills to recover. Collard on the waters, he can go again. The overlap from Ditchburn from half back. He pulls it back towards Sam Brelo. O'Sullivan tried to destroy, it was through their hands. Now this is Peter Worsfold, just outside 50, brought down by Edgar, and the crumbs come oh, from a good tackle. good tackle from behind. Payon calls the umpire, but the ball beats Collard over the line and out of bounds. Same useful enthusiasm that we saw from East Perth in the first half on Saturday. But he was a great game in football for three-quarter time. Boundary throw in. Gaddy in front. Durak gets a fist. Fitzpatrick through his hands. Chance for Amarandi. Post to the boundary line. He pulls it back for Sturrett. Couldn't take the mark. Rums to Cole, though. Bailey's in hot pursuit. The pass up forward. No mark is taken. Going to ground was Baxter. And coming through strongly, Wilson with a good tackle from Cooper. He's forced the hand pass away. And this is Derek Collard now booting it forward for the Bulldogs. Gaddy can't control it. Jurak comes in on top of him. Hand passes out to Browning. He's legged by Rioli. Sterrett. Oh. South Fremantle tripped coming in strongly and the weight of numbers win out. Worst foul to Bayless. Good shepherding. The bulldozer goes through the pack and kicks towards half forward. Now another chance for Collard. With him is Edgar. And there's the quarter time zone. South Fremantle 5-2-32, East Fremantle 3-6-24 at quarter time, an eight-point margin for the Bulldogs. The goal scorers for South, two to Sumich, they've both been brilliant goals. One to Rioli, 
Edwards and Grant and for East Fremantle, Peak in the first moment of play, Sterrett and Durag. What about the leading position getters to quarter time? Thanks Trevor, Scott Waters and Mark Sambrolo, both from South Fremantle, lead the way with six kicks. Waters, two marks, six kicks and five of those kicks have gone to a teammate. He's also fired out three effective hand passes and he's an outstanding young prospect is Scott Waters. Mark Sambrolo at centre half forward for South, he's taken five marks, had six kicks and of those six kicks, five have gone to a teammate and one has sailed out of bounds on the full. He's also made one effective hand pass. In the centre, a good duel between Rioli and Cooper. Uh, Rioli's had three kicks and two hand passes. Cooper, one mark and four kicks. Uh, Quill on his wing for East Fremantle's had three kicks. Uh, then we see Miller on his wing for East Fremantle's had three kicks. Uh, some of the other South Fremantle players, uh, uh, Craig Edwards, three marks and five kicks. Geary's had four kicks and two hand passes. Amoroso, three marks and three kicks before uh, being uh, badly hurt early in the quarter. Worsfold's had two kicks. Bayless, uh, he's been beaten at centre-half back, but he's still managed to pick up four kicks. Grant at full forward, three marks and three kicks. Sumich, three marks and four kicks and a half forward flank. Two kicks to McDonald. For East Fremantle, Amaranti's had four kicks. Browning's only had one. Stewart, a good player at centre-half forward. He's had five kicks and one effective hand pass. Waterman and Edgar have each have had two kicks, as has Derek Court. O'Sullivan's had two. Bushell has had five. Not a bad roving performance with five kicks in the first quarter to David Bushell. Peak playing at right half forward. Two marks and five kicks. Broadbridge, one mark, three kicks and two hand passes. Durex had two kicks. Baxter, one and four effective ruck knockouts. And Cooper, as I mentioned, he's had four kicks in the centre. Free kicks up to quarter time. South Fremantle, five. East Fremantle, three. Eight point margin to the Bulldogs. A quarter time over the Sharks. And the Bulldogs out to break that hoodoo that uh, has been against them in derbies. They haven't won a derby since June of 1984. Today may be their big chance, Keith. Yes, and that, uh, gee, that potential is starting to come through, Trevor. We've been talking about it all year. And uh, they've been a little lazy and a little slack in games. We've seen them. But today they're fully committed. And, and their big guys are starting to do extremely well. The big ruckman. Gatti and Edwards took complete charge in the latter part of that quarter. And Sembrello bringing down magnificent marks at centre half forward. And it's a long time in West Australian football that, that since we've seen marks taken like we saw in that quarter. Some outstanding marks. And Sembrello, I think he took five of them, Ken, was it? Five and, marks and, and six kicks. Outstanding one grab marks at centre half forward. And don't they make a difference? And of course, Grant at full forward is a, is a strong marker also. And uh, that impressed me more than anything else in the first quarter, Trev. The great marking around the ground. Keith, before the game in the room, Stan Magro pulled Mark Sambrano aside and right alongside me. He said to him, today's a big day for you. You're playing on a very good player. I thought he was talking about Sterrett, but obviously it was O'Sullivan. But he said, today you can come of age if you play the game that we expect. Yes, and uh, obviously those words really sunk in with Mark Sambrano, judging by the way he played that first quarter. Well, he's more pumped up than any player out there. Number 42 for South. And in that first 10 minutes of the game, he was everywhere. He was down at half back, at centre half forward, down at full forward. And uh, he really uh, didn't wait for the players to get the ball to him. He went and got it himself. And that, was, that is the sign of a very, very good centre half forward. And uh, even though they started slowly, and Ishii Mantle's experience stood them in good stead right from the start, South came back very strongly. And now Ishii Mantle really do have a problem because they don't have the big man strength to match South Fremantle. And that they've been lacking in the rucking department all year. They've got Guy Baxter out there, Durak at full forward, but uh, it was Durak who did the rucking early in the season for them. And now Guy Baxter has taken over. But when you start comparing those guys with uh, the big men in the South Fremantle side, then Ishimantel fall way short. So Ishimantel's task is to get the ball onto the ground and uh, let their tenacity win the ball, the hard ball in the packs for them, and to set something up. So it's going to be a great game of football. I thought that South were kicking with the breeze in that quarter. It was a breeze, a westerly breeze. This ground runs north-south, and the breeze blowing straight across the ground. But it was interesting to watch the ball flying through the air. It was certainly holding up to the end that Ishimantel were kicking to. And then at the hospital end, we saw the ball carrying a long way. And uh, at half-time, of course, we'll have a better line on that. But looking at good players and looking down the list, I thought that uh, Craig Edwards emerged as a very good player for South in that quarter. He got on top in the ruck and then became a very effective player at full forward. And uh, he has the ability to be the top ruckman in this game. He's an outstanding footballer. I thought Morris Rioli made a slow start to the centre, but he's ever dangerous. And uh, at the end of the quarter, he was starting to go pretty well. I thought Richard Geary did very well on his half-forward flank and out of the centre square. And, uh, and he started to take advantage of the ruckman on top. And
and whipped the ball out of the centre and South looked uh, a lot better. Peter Sumich on a half forward flank was an opportunist. He kicked two goals. Scott Waters, a real class footballer, Scott Waters. And every time he gets the ball, something really uh, constructive happens for South. Sembrello, we've talked about at centre half forward. Big Gordon Gaddy, the Ruckman. And I thought Tony Amoroso was South's best player until he went off the ground. Free Schumannel, Eric Cooper doing very well in the centre of the ground, even though uh, Rioli tended to get away from him a bit in the latter part of the quarter. I thought Brian Peak on a half forward flank was a constructive player and he used the experience out there on young Ditchburn and uh, maybe uh, South have got to have a little look at that area and maybe uh, line up uh, experience with experience otherwise Peak could become a very damaging player. I like the look of Peter Quill, I thought he played well. Ray Sterrett, a very good centre-half forward. Uh, David Bushell, uh, nice to see him playing the ball. I thought he was in a very effective rover. And Michael Broadbridge, uh, a good ruck rover come half-forward flank. This game really up for grabs. Big crowd here, around about the 12, 13,000. And uh, it could be an absolute gem, this one. And what a tragedy for Tony Amoroso, Keith. He's gone to hospital, we believe, uh, what looked like a broken right leg. Yes, well, that is bad luck because uh, he's had his problems with injury. And he started off very confidently today. He wanted the ball. And, uh, you know, he was South's best player until he went off the field. But uh, that's the way the cooking crumbles. I'm looking at George Christie just walking back onto the East Mantle bench. And what an unlucky season it has been for him. He was named as uh, vice-captain of the West Australian side to play in Adelaide. And, of course, uh, the injury uh, to his shoulder has ruled him out of any footy for a few weeks as uh, Graham Melrose goes into the dugout doubt very much whether he'll stay in that dugout for very long in a game like this. So <laughs> this will be a testing quarter for South Fremantle. East Fremantle going what breeze there is for ABC Television, Wally Foreman. South start the second term with an eight-point lead. Edwards and Baxter do battle, and Baxter wins it decisively. Bushel was held with not in possession. He comes back to claim possession at ground level. Broadbridge, who's been industrious throughout the first quarter, puts it down towards centre-half forward. Peak is spoilt by Wilson. Chance for Cole. Gets it to Sterrett. Here's a chance for East Fremantle. No one in the goal square. Well, there is, except for John Ditchburn, who was able to get back to the top of the square. Had the kick had a little bit more carry, it appeared to be on line. And a bad mistake out there by Collard will result in a throw-in that looked to be a very, very simple mark. Very annoyed with himself, Derek Collard. Spilled from his hands, and so East Fremantle still have the ball in their left full forward pocket. Ten is Edwards, blotting out Broadbridge. Beautifully taken by Collard, on to Bayless. Bayless is at right half back. He wanted to run with it. Now he gets it to Waters. Waters towards centre half forward. Thumped to the back of the Bye. pack. Beautifully knocked on. A chance here now for Brad Collard as he kicks down towards full forward. Gaddy at the back. Off hands and a throw in at right full forward for South. It's a very quick transference of play. It was, it was good footy. He realised that uh, South had the numbers there. They had Sumich's opponent out number two to one. And the South player Brad Collard running to the back of that marking contest. Now Gatti does the ruck work this time well, and knocks well. it towards the top of the square. Desperate football back there by the East Fremantle defender Derek Court tied that up and gee that was well done by John Derricourt because it seemed that they were going to take that, South were going to run that ball to the top of the square and it looked as though it could have been an easy goal opportunity in front of them. Gatti again but this time he's been penalised he got it down to Geary and been penalised for a ruck infringement and the kick is with Durack Here's Durack cop one right in the Adams apple. Very painful short pass is on and lurking across half back is Waterman also been a good contributor in this uh, game so far. This is McLean, promising young player with the kick as a stray. Chipping in his Edwards, couldn't bring in the mark. Tackled by Ellis. Is possessed. Now it's with Bomber. Back to Ellis. Wrong foot's an opponent. It kicks towards half four, but there's nobody home for the Sharks. Rioli now with the football. Looks for a lead. Here, it's, here it is. Mark, no mark taken. Off hands to Collard. Here he was who missed the mark. He screws the ball to full forward, and the mark has been taken by Sumich. He can kick that too. Easily. 45 metres out, directly in front of goal. East Fremantle had nobody home there at half forward at all. And South, through weight of numbers, have been able to bring it back, and a great chance to bring up a goal from Peter Sumich. He's lining up for goal number three. Left foot drop, punts on its way. It's floating away, though. And the minor score only. The South Fremantle of 5 3, 33, East Fremantle 3 6 24. The 
ball brought back into play around the members' side of the ground, and that's got great carry, but Edwards with a very good mark at the back of Baxter. That's going to be a tough duel all day today. Two very big and burly customers, Guy Baxter and Craig Edwards. Edwards putting the ball back towards full forward. Durak gets his fist to it. First back to it will be Geary. Coming in from the side now is Quill. That allows O'Sullivan to pick it up. He's still outnumbered badly. Tries to get it across to Waterman, and the ball runs out of play. But that much vaunted instrumental half back line of Edgar O'Sullivan and Waterman has found itself under enormous pressure so far in this game. It's time Durak and uh, Baxter combine to outruck Edwards. But Edwards picks it up, has a quick look, sees Collard back at centre-half forward. He in turn looks in towards full forward. Oh, they all waited, including Ellis. Eventually he socketed towards centre-half forward where Bushell tries to knock it to his team's advantage. Rioli goes back on an open goal and he's missed. Well, two opportunities for Souths in the opening minutes of this uh, second quarter that had they been converted would have really put East Fremantle under pressure. And Bushell should have done a lot better there. He should have gathered that ball in. And uh, goal seemed a bit harder to kick at that end, Wal. Yes. Edger, down the middle of the ground, taken away by Derek Court. He kicks towards Miller. Oh. He was up the four acceptances. With him was Brad Collard. Gets the hand pass away through the legs of Broadbridge. Ball tied up here at half back, And there'll be another bounce down. Early riser, Miller. Makes a man healthy and wealthy though, well. Edwards over the top of Baxter. Chance for Bushel. Waters was a tackler. Ground level, it's Miller diving in Rioli. Shoveled out by East Fremantle to Broadbridge from Baxter. The kick towards half forward. Who's home this time? Bomber. Not this time, Bob. He's been paid the mark. Not this time. <laughs> he was looking for another 50. Beautifully played by Broadbridge. Sold the dummy with a handball, gave himself room, and a beautiful kick to Bomber Fleet. Well, he's outside 50 metres. Take a great kick from the veteran. Set it up in the square. Browning rose high at the back pole. He overran it. Knocks it back now to accommodate Amaranti. Good desperation by Fitzpatrick. The ball spills to Browning, left full forward pocket. It's a snapshot on goal, and one behind only, over the top of the post. So a hectic play down there in the pocket. One behind the result, as you can see. East Fremantle at 3-7, south of 5-4, and the margin, nine points. Wilson to put the ball back into play for the Bulldogs. Browning trying very hard for East Fremantle, not really able to be effective, but at least he's giving it uh, both barrels. Six minutes now into the second quarter, and Wilson elects to go straight down the centre of the ground. It's a good kick. Peak up, not able to mark oh. it, knocked on by Ditchburn, but straight to an opponent. Chance now for Rioli, gets the ball wide of the pack, good tackle applied, Collard caught, play still allowed to go on. South Fremantle trying to do a little bit too much, but they get out of it, and here's Geary again. Gee, he's been a valuable player since uh, about 10 or 15 minutes into that first quarter. Ruck road. Now he looks for something short, he's got balance, he's not all that short. The kick was, there goes the kick back towards full forward, Gaddy's at the back, couldn't get his hands to it. Jurek got his to it, and O'Sullivan again relieves the pressure. He's starting to exert some influence now, except that he's put it out of play on the full. And so a free kick to South Fremantle, and I think it's Sumich who's got it out there. Good pressure from South. He goes in short, and Waters has it. Oh, so look this, at this, look at this. That's a shocking oh. kick from Scott Waters, and Geary is hurt as a result of it. East Fremantle had three or four players assembled at centre-half back. Now they have the chance to take it forward through Waterman. Oh, he, try, he tried to do too much. Hand pass was there to Cooper. Now they take it down towards full forward. Mascos back in great takes a well-judged mark. And that was a good act too from Arthur Mascos. Went into a free-willing spin. The umpire realised that it hadn't been inflicted by the East Fremantle opponent. Geary starts to inflict a little bit of pain of his own. He's received a bit this afternoon. Waters takes it out of the pack, tries to get it to the advantage of a teammate in Worsfold. He gets it to Rioli. Back it goes to Waters. Good running and backing up by the South Fremantle midfielders. Down towards Sumich. If he'd been able to pick that up, he was in. He's been given another chance. There goes that left foot back towards full forward. Collard up over Edgar. Edgar recovered beautifully. Great tackle applied back there by Cliff Collard, by uh, Derek Collard. But a bounce down will result. There's a few of them out there, Well, It's a bit hard at times, isn't it? Mind you, if you just call them Collard, if you're happy with that, you don't make too many mistakes. Have you noticed? <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning quickly, Trev. 
Speeds for Van will bring it away through and Sullivan around the outer side of the ground and this ball will run out of play. So the Fremantle feud continues. South Fremantle 5-4, East Fremantle 3-7. And it's not getting any warmer here at all. <laughs> no, we're perched on the roof today in our broadcasting position right alongside the cameras and a little bit breezy. It's more than a draft well. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's the best draft we've had for a while, though. Well, it's not one of those drafts, mind you. As you said earlier, Trev, it could take some commentators with it. Waters kicks the ball inside 50. Gaddy's up. Jurak, and from the back, ah. Sumich. Oh, he's got a great pair of hands, Sumich. He's right back in sparkling form. Look at Sam Brailo. Beautifully weighted kick, wasn't great it? Great kick. Great positioning by Sam Brailo. You can see the South Fremantle supporters are smiling. Doesn't he love the half-board flank so much? A lot better player there than a centre-half back. Last time we saw him, Keith, he was all out of form. Yep, and out of position. Sam Brando lining up. 35 metres out, directly in front. He stamped at it. He's put it through. First goal of the match to Mark Sam Brando. He's been a real winner at centre-half forward. In fact, these from Mandela falling down badly, Keith, across their half-forward line. And uh, South now go to 6 4 40. East Fremantle 3 7 25. Yeah, well, they haven't been falling down across there because Sterrett beat it in very well in the first quarter. It's yeah, a lovely quarter, mark by Sam Brailo, a lovely mark, and that was a beautiful kick from Sumich. Deep out on the right half forward flank, and inch perfect that kick for Sam Brailo, who's very strong overhead. In this quarter, though, East Fremantle got nothing across their half forward line. Well, that's Baxter thumping the ball to centre half forward. Bayless intercepts it. Rubbered kick gives uh, East Fremantle a chance for Miller, but he got a, an unfortunate bounce taken by Collard to Waters. Back it goes to Geary. Further afield to Cliff Collard. Another good hand pass to Waters, and here they go again. Six or seven hand passes in that exchange, and they have it at full forward. But Durak standing oh. up stoutly. Yes, he played on, didn't he? Or did well, he? Well, almost. He was, uh, certainly indicated he was going to hand pass it. Yes, but I think you've got to sort of do more than that. Well, well, Durak with the kick back towards oh. centre half forward. You didn't at Collegians after it. Chance here for Geary, he goes back towards goal, they've got another one, look at the goal umpire, he did not move, one centimetre either way, 7-4 to 3-7, and the South Fremantle players ran to, ran to Geary as though they just won a grand final, there's certainly some feeling out there. Let's have another look at it, the ball spilling over the back, bushels there, the Rioli handball is absolutely superb, Geary breaking away, set up by the Rioli handball, and uh, as you said, while well, the umpire not moving one centimetre and another goal on the board. And South's full potential starting to be realised. And boy, aren't they a threat at this, in this form. Left-handed hand pass two from Rioli. Stanley football out of the middle. Chance for Redwoods. Villa missed it. Now it's Collard. This is Brent Collard. Brilliant hand pass. To Sam Brado, back to Collard, they're fiddling now, up in the air, sets a young Collard up, punched away by McLean, and Quill clears away for the Sharks. The Sharks are in a spot of bother. This is Broadbridge. McDonald closing. Good play, wrong footed McDonald, then kicks towards half forward. Cole on the half volley. Can he work it forward? He's in trouble now. In come the trips from South Fremantle. And that'll be a bounce down at left half forward. One hand pass too many on the South Fremantle yeah, half yeah, forward line. Trip. Just a little bit of an experience where they were getting such good value out of their long kicks. And Tim Jeff's gone to sleep, I think. East Fremantle bench looks a bit worried. Baxter doing the rut work with Edwards. Baxter got a push. Diving on top of the ball, McDonald can't get it out. Umpire said it was being held to him. Scott Waters has been in brilliant form in this quarter. He's had five kicks already in the opening 12 minutes of the second quarter. Baxter and Edwards, no clean tap. Chance for Broadbridge. Fresh air shot, knocked on by Baxter. Bayless, good spin with Waters. Away goes south again through Waters. He's been in great form, as you heard from Ken Casellas. This is Collard now. Cliff hand passes it brilliantly. Dipsburn on the left foot into the pocket. Sam Brelo. Oh, great spoil from Ellis. And the umpires paid the mark. Free kick in fact, but he did mark it. It is Sumich is the man. It is Sumich and he's winded, I'd say. Gee, fell very heavily. Just he's not unlike uh, Matt Sambrello to look at, is he? No, they're very much alike. Crop of black hair, and uh, the umpire paid the free kick because he was held by the arm. But in fact, uh, I believe he dragged the mark in anyway. There he is going to ground with it. He's still got it. And uh, the umpire paying the free kick. No wonder he uh, came up gingerly, Keith. Well, he hit, he hit his head on the ground very much the same as uh, Silvani did the other day. My immediate reaction, too. And the man on the mark didn't get three weeks for it. 
great decisions made there. We won't go into that though. Sumich now from 40 metres out. Left foot on its way, it'll come back, but not enough. Over the top of the post and the minor score only. He was obviously badly shaken by that heavy tumble he took in attempting that mark. South of 7-5, East Fremantle 3-7. 22 points the difference. And Miller's accepted the pass from the kick back into play. A nicely weighted pass finds Cooper now at right half back. And away go the Sharks. The kick up towards half forward is very close to the boundary line. It bounces back into play though. This is Bayless. Gets around Broadbridge. Over the top, Fitzpatrick. He'll be claimed by Sterrett. Oh, I can't grab a player around the neck, unfortunately. He did that pretty well, actually, for a young fella, didn't he? He knew he was going to be caught. He just dropped to the ground. Bayless showing a bit of strength. Fitzpatrick with the kick to half forward. This is Sam Brailer in the pack. Can't take the mark. Destroyed by O'Sullivan. And that'll be a boundary throw in. Got out of Jurak. Getting mixed up on, over the boundary line. In Not fact, it's gone out on the full. And uh, boundary up by Stuart Tempest was right on the spot. There you see him, and he's indicated that it came off Collard's boot, and so Durak has one of those fortunate free kicks that uh, sometimes occur with that rule. Short kick, too, from Durak has been intercepted easily by McDonald. They're a bit rattled, these from Pete. Yes, well, they're not even winning the little man game now. Sam Brelo again, another mark. Ooh, was he off? I think he was thinking about it until he had another look. Well, he should have been. Back towards the half-forward line of Waters, just drifting in in front of the pack. South just keeping it off their East Fremantle opponents. They're doing plenty of running East Fremantle at the moment. And it's all chasing. Ditchburn has it. He's now up on the forward line. Peak obviously has a new opponent. Here's Waters again. Another player loose in the pocket. Not a good kick. Sumich has it. He's a natural left footer. Back into a beautifully weighted kick. That was a clever kick. There were two of them going into the pocket. Collard wants it. That'd be silly, Cliff. Let him have a shot. Geary has it. He'll shoot from about 40 metres. He's on a very acute angle. Collard was only about uh, 10 metres further afield. He was on a better angle, but the Reese Fremantle players everywhere. Wouldn't have done much worse than that, I guess. Ball still in play. The hand pass went back to a South Fremantle player. Oh. And the mark, an easy mark, dropped by Quill. So a throw in at left full forward. And I think it was Grant who kicked the ball across the face. Right. South Fremantle are winning the big man department and the little man department. 7-5, South East Fremantle 3-7, 47 plays 25, Gaddy to the front of the pack, Geary went without it. No one able to take it away cleanly, eventually Waterman gets a chance, he was tackled from behind by Grant, Waterman followed it up strongly, Peak is loose out on the outer side of the ground, oh that's courageous stuff by the bomber, he didn't take the mark but he set it up for Cooper, Cooper inside the centre line, puts it to centre half forward, Baylor's coming across, interference, no not paid to Browning, in they go solidly now, and a South Fremantle player who had not the ball clear was claimed from behind by Amarandi and the free kick is with Fitzgerald. Fitz or, Fitz Jack, or Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick, I'm sorry. Fitzpatrick to the wing position. Miller now for East Fremantle. Kicks towards centre half forward from the back. Broadbridge over the top of McDonald. Well, they're falling down badly in this quarter across that half forward line. Ken for mine. Yes, well, uh, East Fremantle must try and look to it. Uh, Clinton Browning a bit more, he must lead a bit more from full forward, but Broadbridge did take a fine time out there. That's a good mark. Big fellow now from 35 metres out, kicks on its way, I think he's glided it through. A good kick from the bareheaded boy from East Fremantle, Broadbridge, there he is, and uh, steered that one through for the Sharks, badly needed Keith to take them to 4-7. Crowding the Bulldogs 7-5. Yes, well, they haven't played like a side who's been kicking with the breeze, but uh, South have absolutely dominated the big man department and now the small man department. I suppose they go together. That's a lovely mark by Broadbridge, a very talented player, and uh, right up and over. A very strong mark indeed over McDonald. He made no mistake, but as you said, a very badly needed goal. 17 minutes gone in the second quarter. Durek rises high, wins the tap. Rioli sharked it though. Brilliant. Kicks have only got up at about 15 metres. Brad Collard with him as Miller. Back comes Durak. Gets around Gatti. Then kicks towards centre half forward. McDonald will fly. Couldn't take the mark. Bayless brought the pack down. The ball tied up the attacking side of the square. Shuffled out now by East Fremantle. Chance for Fitzpatrick. Coming through Broadbridge with him as mascot. Broadbridge got a push in the back. There's a fight behind play. There's a fight behind play at centre half forward. Bayless will have to be one of them, I reckon. He's in there. And uh, there's a player that's got him in a terrific hammer. Amarandi. Amarandi, yeah. He didn't like to fight Bayless. And 
Would you, Will? I wouldn't like to fight anyone, to be honest, Trent. No, Ray Sterrett told him to steady up or else. <laughs> and he's a pretty strong guy too, they tell me. See, Fremantle will have the kick, though, as uh, tempers are being settled. Once again, it's Broadbridge who kicked the last goal. Shows a lot of promise. It's too far out to score, I'd say. The drop punt's on its way. It's at the top of the square. Browning's in the pack. It was all East Fremantle, but it came to Bomber. He says, thank you very much, and kicks East Fremantle's fifth goal of the match. Two to Bomber. The Sharks are 5-7. South Fremantle 7-5. And in the last few moments, Keith, they looked a little bit better. Yes, and uh, Peak is the man that's lifted for East Fremantle. He's gone chasing kicks. He agreed with you, Trev, I think, that it wasn't happening on the half-forward line. And uh, he, we saw him play very courageously a few minutes ago. There's the pack in the air. All the rover is uh, Pete. And he very quickly had onto that left foot, left foot and through the goal. But he's the one that stirred East Fremantle. It's back to 10 points here at Fremantle Oval. South Fremantle still in control. Good knock, backhanded knock by Gaddy, but it's knocked forward by East Fremantle. Waters has it. He's looking for someone going past, and there was no one. Chance now for worse fall. They've got to get a kick in. Hand pass to Collard. Collard puts it over the half forward line, a shocking kick off the side of the boot. First to it is Sumich, in pursuit is Ellis, he's got him too. Causes, that causes him to hand pass straight to O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan gets it across the top to Quill. Quill from the half back line puts it down towards Broadbridge and East Fremantle are now starting to put their football together. He's lifted, Broadbridge. They're the attacking side of the centre line, Gatti getting back to try and spoil the mark by Durak. South's a chance now. Rioli emerges from the pack with the footy. His kick is smothered. It deflects straight to an East Fremantle player, Sterrett, who puts it down towards centre-half forward. Brilliantly spoiled there by, is it McDonald? It's Patrick. It's Patrick. Eventually it comes to Bushel. He goes back towards goal. This could be another one. Oops, it sits up on the goal line, and uh, Wilson is able to run it through. The other player that's lifted very strongly and has made a difference is Jurak. He's come onto the ball, and uh, he has started to half and, in fact, beat the South Fremantle Ruckman and that has brought the East Mantle smaller guys back into the game. Collard breaking into the pocket. That's been ignored. And the ball is cleared by Wilson to the outer side of the ground, but he's kicked it straight to an East Mantle opponent. And that player is Quill. He in turn has found Bushel, who tried to juggle it. It's taken by Mascos. Beautiful hand pass to Collard, and away he goes. They're closing on him, but he's got plenty of room and time. How far? He's been penalised for going too far. I reckon. He ran a long, long way. Well, he saw the tackle coming. He was not able to bounce it then, of course, because uh, it would have set him. He would have set himself up, and they've given the ball away. Derek Court standing unattended in the centre of the ground. South 7547, East Fremantle 5838. 20 minutes gone in this quarter as they bring it to the members' side of the ground, and Miller has the mark. He in turn goes oh, short, okay. looking for something in the pocket. Chance now for South to break it up. Derek Court. Back to Sterrett. Sterrett strikes one tackle. That's caught by Waters beautifully. Bushel soccers it over the line. Boundary throwing it by half forward for East Fremantle. The crowd wanted a free kick there. They believed it was out intentionally. A bit of an experience then from Miller Keith. As he slipped, didn't he? Should have gone back. This is Miller again. Boots the Sharks forward. Chance for Browning. With him is Wilson. Browning. He paid the mark. Good use of the body then by Clint Browning. Tremendous experience. Yeah, sure. He'll shoot on goal from about 20 metres on a 45 degree angle. Yeah, glad to see Clint Browning getting into the game. He's been uh, accused of uh, being lethargic this season and he's had a fair bit of criticism. In fact, he's played a few games in the reserve, but uh, he's tried very hard here for East Fremantle today. He hasn't been all that effective, but he's tried very hard indeed. Sam Magro on the phone. Obviously, uh, not happy with something there about South Fremantle's play. Browning's taking a long time. Deliberate shot at goal. Right foot drop punt. He's on the way. I don't know. It's close. One behind only. Right over the top of the face. Couldn't quite bring it back. And meanwhile, Trevor, Morris Rioli's got a new opponent, Tim Jepp, has come out onto the field to guard Morris Rioli. In fact, the extra metal set line also, Ken, their kicks haven't been penetrating enough. No, but Miller uh, has done uh, he's had, reasonably well. He's got well. some kicks, hasn't he? But you think he's used them well enough? Yes, well, three of his four kicks this quarter have landed on the chest of a teammate. Right. Here's a kick back into play. This time it's found the mark out there. And the South Fremantle player is Fitzpatrick. He's also playing a serviceable game, a serviceable game for the Bulldogs. Although on this occasion the kick's astray. He was looking for Brad Collard. But it's out of bounds on the full. And Ray Sterrett to put the Sharks back into attack. In between left centre wing and left half forward. Almost in front of the scoreboard watched by the big crowd out there on the concrete. 
There goes the right foot kick. Just inside 50 metres. Browning went to the ground. Knocked on by Gaddy. Plus the mascot. Tackled down by Cooper. Pushing the back. There's the umpire. What do you think of that, Keith? Well, it was on. He was certainly pushing the back, but he was lucky to get it the way the umpire's been playing. Good pass to Waters. Defensive side of the square. Pulls the ball across his body. Brad Connard is loose. Didn't take the mark. Closing his quill. He gets around him. He has got tremendous speed. Runs the attacking side of the square and a bullet like pass to Sumich. He's got good recovery, 45 metres out, left foot kick, he's kicked underneath and it's up in the air. Edgar gets a fist to it, knocks it towards the boundary line. Edwards can keep it in play though, he's tackled strongly by Baxter, forced a hand pass away and this time it is out of bounds in the left foot forward pocket. Well, it's a lot of difference it makes when an umpire gives a free kick early but deliberately taking the ball out of bounds because the players themselves are really trying hard to keep it in bounds now and that makes for better footy. Baxter and Edwards from the back, Durack straight Take to Bushel, brilliant palm, but knocked away by Sam Brano towards the boundary line. In comes Collard, in comes Bushel, good play by the Rover. He knocks it back towards Miller, good shepherding by McLean, but Rioli was there to uh, destroy the hand pass, and that'll be another boundary throw in. 50 metres out from the, from the South Fremantle goal, and it's South Fremantle 47, East Fremantle 39, 24 minutes gone. Boundary throwing almost on the 50 metre line. Edwards, but up over the top, the East Fremantle Ruckman, O'Sullivan, able to get the ball to the side of the pack. They tried to keep it in play, but not able to do that. So we'll have another throw in midway between left centre wing and left half forward for South. And I agree completely with Keith Slater. Watching the back line uh, put the ball out of play all the time is a bit like watching Jeff Boycott bat. It sort of defeats the purpose of the game. Edwards wins a decisive knock but it didn't go very far taps it back the second time towards Waters and that would have been penalised for a throw as often as not the other Saturday or Monday nevertheless they've got away with it Sam Brelo down towards full forward and a clear push in the back Eric Horton will get the free kick I was South feeling it was a chain there. reaction <laughs> yeah. I think the push was three back right Souths need a goal just to uh, stop the East Fremantle run as they kick it short across the ground to Baxter Baxter goes down towards Peak on centre wing. He's got away from Mascos. Puts it back towards the centre of the ground and O'Sullivan. When he wanted to go too. I might add that Peak is playing on the, the other half forward flank to where he got that kick. O'Sullivan down towards full forward. Ellis is down there, Browning over the top. Ball knocked straight back to Bushel. Run to Amaranti. Socket back towards centre wing now and the race is on out there. Looks like Quill, I think, leading in the race for it. In pursuit was Geary. Quill did it pretty well. Back to centre half forward where Dirac is standing unattended. Good mark. Oh, oh the head pass was easily intercepted by Waters. Now Souths have a break. Sam Brelo is 10 metres clear of O'Sullivan if they can get it to him. Too late. Indecisive footy out there. Into time on in this second quarter. Cliff Collard was up way too early. Jeff with his first kick. Cross towards the members' wing. Right. Miller tried to use his body on Collard. He was too strong. He goes short. And the, the shot for goal will be taken by Grant from about 45 metres. Oh, Brad Collard, superb football. Meet the footy. Yeah. You're taught that when you're about 11 years old. You can't wait, Keith, can you? And if you do it often enough, you learn how to read the bounce. And Collard had no qualms at all. Ishmael were foxy, Edgar, and Collard straight through and set it up beautifully. Grant almost directly in front, has got his second, and that's a timely goal for South Fremantle. That will stem the tide, the tide that was gathering momentum as far as East Fremantle were concerned. South's moved to 8-5, and East Fremantle at 5-9. Yep, well, there's a good lesson there for young footballers watching, because uh, Collard played that absolutely superbly, and he went and met his football, backed himself in, and a uh, very reliable player is he. In fact, the Collard boys are playing very well indeed. Ken, what is the total number of kicks from the Collard boys? Brad's had eight, uh, Derek's had two, and Cliff's had two. So Brad has been uh, the best of the three, and here's Scott Waters who's playing a phenomenal quarter. This is his 19th kick, and his 13th for the quarter. And look at Sumich, 13 for the quarter. Yes. Sumich, 50 metres out. He's gone for the short pass. Making the opportunity was Geary. And he's marked 45 metres out on a slight angle. There's another short pass on. This time it's Derek Collard. And that's slack defence from East Fremantle. Just came down in swarms then, Keith. Collard lining up from 35 metres out. Only a slight angle. And this really is 
punishment for East Fremantle. Goals in the time on period. It looks pretty good. Full points to young Derek Pollard. He's pleased about that. Improved his kick tally. His first goal on the board for the Bulldogs. South of 9 5, 59. East Fremantle 5 9, 39. That margin back to 20 points, three minutes into time off. Yes, and this great potential we've been talking about in South Fremantle over the last. Uh, this season especially is starting to come to the fore now and uh, gee they look a talented bunch when they get going together if they can maintain this form then anything is possible for them this year south lead by 20 points they led by eight points at quarter time so it's been a good second quarter for them there's a brilliant smother by geary but cooper gets another chance down towards the half forward line east Roman will have the oh! there. what a sensational <laughs> mark taken by waterman an absolutely spectacular mark raked it in one hand and has picked out peak East Fremantle's only multiple goal scorer, Brian Peake, and he will shoot from 45 metres, and he he must kick this goal. It would be the only reward for the mark taken out there by Waterman. What a quarter peak he's played. I know what his stats look like, Ken, but he's the man that's kept the East Fremantle in this game. Little five marks and nine kicks to Brian Peake. He lined up and straight through the centre. That's the third goal to Brian Peake, and East Fremantle needed that, just as South needed one a few minutes ago. It's 9-5 to 6-9. The Bulldogs still lead. And if they think Peake he's finished as a footballer, they better have another think, because in these tough games, let's have another look at the mark. And... Uh, Waterman up early and stayed in the air, had the feet uh, firmly in the back of McDonnell and was able to drag it in. And uh, that was quite a superb mark. And in fact, the marking in this game has been by far the best we've seen all year. This has been a great game of footy so far. And everything. There's the centre bounce, flat as a gun barrel. Gaddy tried to get it to Waters. It came to uh, Waterman, he's dispossessed. Waters boots South Fremantle forward again. Over the head of Edgar. Chance for Collard. Now it's McLean, he's tackled strongly. Again, the Collard brothers in action, holding the ball, the decision. There's another Collard running past the whole three of them are there. This is Cliff. Right foot kick into the pocket. He's looking for Grant, and it with him there is Derricourt at the front. Cooper boots uh, the Sharks out of the trouble. Edgar takes the mark. There's the siren for half time. And what a good game of football. South Fremantle 9 5 59. East Fremantle 6 9 45. A 14-point margin to the Bulldogs at half-time. Goal scorers for South Fremantle, Sumich and Grant have both kicked two apiece. Singles to Rioli, Geary, Edwards, Derek Collard and Mark Sambrato. And for East Fremantle, Brian Peake has kicked three. Singles to Sterrett, Broadbridge and Durag. And keep in mind, after half-time, we'll have Ken Casillas along with a complete rundown of the stats right now with the best players to half time ABC's Keith Slater yes well a magnificent uh, half of football and full marks to South Fremantle they, uh, all their full potential came through in that quarter and they looked one million dollars and uh, had it not been for a little bit of an experience in their forward line then they could well have been further in front but just uh, 14 points the difference and uh, South earned that reward for South none better than Scott Waters a very talented player moved out of the centre this year because of the presence of Morris Rioli and he took a little while to warm up uh, operating out of a forward pocket and changing on the ball but geez he wielded some influence on this game he's been absolutely sensational around the middle of the ground and his skills are so great that every possession he gets is usually an effective one so much on a half forward flank last time we saw him play he was at centre half back and uh, he didn't look that interested today he's absolutely magnificent on a half forward flank he's presenting himself everywhere he has great skills and uh, he, he has really been a top player he's kicked how many goals two goals and i'm surprised he hasn't kicked more because every time you look up so much seems to be having a shot at goal now the so brothers have played very well indeed sombrero at center half forward's been a top player edwards a top ruckman and geary a top ruck rover free shimandle peaky's been their best player in the first half broadbridge has been a very tr uh, hard trier for them cooper has tried very hard and uh, waterman likewise but generally south have had more good players than east Fremantle. thanks a lot keith south Fremantle won the reserves match too and at half time they lead in the league game 9 5 59 the east Fremantle 6 9 45 a margin of 14 points and the stage set for what should be a great second half of football and don't forget you can see the highlights again tonight too on football tonight at 10 30. We'll leave you now with American Sports Cavalcade. Look forward to your company after the halftime break. Welcome back to the Fremantle Oval. 
Foundation Day Derby. Big crowd, tremendous atmosphere here. And so far we've seen a very entertaining game of football. At half time, it's South Metal 9-5. That's 59. Leading the Sharks 6-9-45 by a margin of 14 points. Conditions have been quite good too. There's a bit of cloud cover around at the moment. The breeze still coming in from that westerly direction, blowing down into the left full forward pocket at the uh, hospital end of the ground. But uh, nevertheless, the ground in great condition and the stage set for what should be an exciting half of football. Well, Ken, what about the stats to half time? You've uh, been working hard there during the half time break. What have you come up with? Thanks, Trevor. Well, some. Uh as the little league game concludes, we see that Scott Waters, the South Fremantle Ruck Rover, has been an absolutely dominant player in the first half of football with five marks, 20 kicks and five effective hand passes. And of those 20 kicks by Waters, uh, 17 have gone directly to a teammate. He was absolutely dominant in the second quarter. That's the uh, Scott Waters, the 19-year-old student teacher, who gave uh, the East Fremantle players a lesson in skill, persistency and endeavour. And in the second quarter, he picked up 14 kicks, 12 went to a teammate, and of those 12, four uh, were accepted by Peter Sumich on a half-forward flank. So at half-time, a brilliant performance by Scott Waters. Peter Sumich, as I've mentioned, outstanding on a half-forward flank for South Fremantle, six marks and 11 kicks. Uh, Matt Sa Mark Sambrello at centre half-forward, eight marks and 10 kicks. So there's some tremendous marking power up forward for South Fremantle by Sumich and Sambrello. Brian Peake has played very, very strongly on a half-forward flank for East Fremantle, five marks, nine kicks and four hand passes. Broadbridge moved from a ruck roving role to centre half forward in the latter stages of the centre of the second quarter for East Fremantle, three marks and nine kicks. Eric Cooper started in the centre, then he went on to the ball for East Fremantle, two marks and nine kicks. And just going back to that move of Broadbridge, Ken, do you think that was a telling factor that perhaps brought East Fremantle back into the game in that second term? It did too, because Sterrett wasn't giving East Fremantle any marking power at uh, centre half forward. He didn't take a mark in the first half of football, and when Broadbridge went to centre half forward, he took a couple of excellent marks and uh, he kicked uh, a, a, a vital goal uh, in the uh, second quarter for East Fremantle and I think Broadbridge should continue in that position. East Fremantle out on the ground, umpires are there also, umpires Ball and Johnson and still waiting for South Fremantle. And Trevor, at half time South Fremantle have taken 48 marks to East Fremantle's total of 32, so quite an advantage in the air to the South Fremantle, 48 to 32. They've had 111 kicks to 95, 38 effective hand passes to East Fremantle's 21, so South Fremantle certainly deserve to be in front in this derby. In fact, Ken, that performance by Scotty Waters, uh, one of the best performances up until half time that we've seen this season. Enormous. Uh, I can't recall uh, any game this year that a player's had 14 kicks in a quarter of football and uh, definitely no player's had 20 kicks in the first half of football in any match we've covered this year. Well, there's some players of the future. Let's hope they go on and perhaps one day wear the red and white colours for the Bulldogs in uh, days to come. Leading positions, Ken. Uh, for, well, Geary's done well on the ball for South Fremantle. He's had nine kicks. Brad Collard, his wing, a busy player with eight. Sterrett, uh, centre half forward, then moving to a ruck roving role for East Fremantle, had nine kicks. Uh, Miller playing solidly on a wing, three marks and seven kicks. Morris Rioli in the centre for South Fremantle, two marks, seven kicks and six effective hand passes. And Quill, the East Fremantle wingman, has picked up seven kicks in the first half of football. Well, Keith Slater, East Fremantle are kicking against the breeze in this term. This could be a real danger quarter for them. South could easily take advantage here because so many times this season we've seen the third quarter be the, be the telling one in a game of football. Uh, I've always said, Trev, that good sides play their best football in the third quarter. And uh, that breeze, uh, South made light of the breeze in that quarter, although I will say that kicking to the Perth end of the ground, it seems to be harder to kick goals at that end than the other end of the ground. It's a swirly type breeze. It's coming from the west. Uh, we thought it was favouring the Fremantle end of the ground or the hospital end of the ground. But uh, as I say, South got on top in the big man department. They did very well through Edwards and, uh, and Gatti. And uh, of course, their small upper grade are absolutely superb with Waters leading the way. And uh, what a magnificent quarter of football. In fact, a magnificent half of football he played. We saw all the Collard brothers in the action in that quarter and it was very hard to distinguish who was the best out of them. Uh, Brad Collard had the best figures, but uh, the other, Derek, I thought, played very well on the outer wing, and uh, Cliff uh, had his moments of glory during the game. So they were other smaller players that got into the game. And, of course, Ro Rioli and Geary, especially out of the centre square, and that's where Rioli did most of his good work, because his work in the packs 
is absolutely outstanding. They call him Mr. Magic, you know, and how he gets his foot or hand of the ball out of those centre packs, I, I'd never ever know, but he does it, and uh, he always has some South players running on in front of the game and uh, realising that he has this unique ability to do that. I thought in the latter part of the quarter, Isham Andal put Durak onto the ball, and he became a good player for them. He stemmed the tide as far as the dominance of the South Ruck were concerned. And, of course, we saw other players lift like Peak. He was the man that uh, kept Isham Andal in the game. He wouldn't die, and he kept racing around the half-forward line, getting kicked, some of them down near the half-back line. I thought Broadbridge uh, was a very good player for them also. And uh, East were able to hang on and just trail by 14 points at half-time. But they could have been in worse trouble had they not lifted their game halfway through that quarter. Umpire ball to get the second half underway here at Fremantle Oval. Out of about 12,000 in attendance, Edwards a big tap. Ball rolling towards half forward, picked up though by Waterman. His kick goes straight up in the air at uh, the big fellow's camp underneath it, Craig Edwards. Pretty ordinary kick by Waterman. He goes out wide, Rioli's made himself available, or is it kick it out there? Kick it it is. Marked in front of Edgar. Left foot drop punt into the pocket. And up goes Pollard it is, he's got a different jumper on. Picked up by McLean, who uh, hugs the boundary with the kick. In comes Edgar. Coming to meet him was kick it, and that'll be a boundary throw in. Who's changed jumpers? Which collar? Cliff? Cliff Collard. Oh, from 14 that, to 3. To me, that is very unprofessional. We'll come back after half time with a different number on. Edwards and Baxter. Baxter wins the tap. Bushel didn't want to know about it. Picked up by Collard. Hand passes to his brother. He cuts in field. Pulls the ball across his body. It's outside the, or just inside 50 metres. And hello, Sumich has got another number on as well. That is incredible. Sumich is wearing number five. This pullover was badly torn in the second quarter. Oh, well, nine. that's unprofessional. I'm sure there'd be a reason for it, though. And they, Ellis, Ellis, well, Ellis has been done, has moved on to Sumich. What do that's they do if important. there's no other jumper available? Just totally unprofessional. Baxter wins the tap, Bushel, out wide, this is Quill, and the ball beats him over the line and out of bounds. Ellis has been moved out onto Sumich, I'm not surprised because he was a very damaging player in the first half, and uh, Durak, uh, he's not doing badly on the ball now. Boundary throw in, midway between right centre wing and right half forward for South Fremantle. Knocking it to the front of the pack, East Fremantle take possession and hook it up towards centre wing through Quill. Baxter, knocked away from him by Fitzpatrick, comes back to Baxter, close to the boundary line as you could see, but he kept it in play and puts it down towards Sterrett, who took a very good mark for a wedge between two South Fremantle opponents. And was never going to miss it because he wanted it very badly. Back at centre half forward, Sterrett. Broadbridge. Oh, yes. Fitzpatrick couldn't get back to him, and so Broadbridge will take the first shot on goal in this third quarter. And he's certainly well within kicking distance. He will shoot from about 40 metres. And he's on a 45 degree angle. As you can see, we're right, almost right behind the line of the kick. And it's a very good kick from Broadbridge. And that makes the difference just eight points. Two goals now to Broadbridge. East Fremantle make the start they would have been hoping for them to this third quarter. They move to seven goals, nine. South, so nine goals, five. Yes, well, a good passage of play, that, with Baxter to Sterrett. He took a beautiful mark. He's a strong man. And then he transferred to Broadbridge. And uh, Sterrett, meat in the sandwich, but good leap, good hands, and a clean grab. Set of bounds. Baxter doing battle with Edwards. Edwards a clean tap again. Not forward, though, by Jeff. It comes to kick it. His half-distance kick is uh, read nicely by Waterman. He boots each remand into attack. Up goes Bayless, couldn't take the mark. Ditchburn read it well. He uh, kicks it around the outer side of the ground. Waters, clever mark. Best on ground, Scott Waters. Passes on, well, well directed though. Edgar tried to knock it away from Collard. Chipping in now is, uh, is it Cliff Collard wearing three now, Walt? Yes, yes correct, yeah, right. he swapped the 14. Yeah. I thought Edgar should have taken the mark then. He was in the best position. Cliff Collard has sent the free kick. He's almost in front of the scoreboard. Forward of the left centre wing for South Fremantle. Chance for them to build something up. Wants to play on, gets around his marksman easily. Then goes for the little depth pass. And into the air is Sumich. Cliff 
Collard yeah, wearing he's number five. playing on the same wing as he played on last year. Down to the amount of is running loose, but it was picked up too casually. Quill was the spoiler, kicked out of defence by Amarandi, and Sturrett, out marking Bannis, who lost his footing. Away he goes, draws a player, over the top to Broadbridge, he's a real live wire, and from the attacking side of the square, went for Browning, but couldn't uh, quite find him. Inter into, uh, intercepting was McDonald, it comes into the uh, pocket to Cooper, who pulls it back across his body, and the mark taken by Cole. The shoot on goal from 30 metres out, 45 degree angle. Jeb's been moved on to Waters and Amaranti on to Rioli. Cole, there's not much of him. Lining up from this left full forward pocket. Kicks on its way. It's through. Full points to East Fremantle. A good start to this third quarter of football. A kick back the leeway from South Fremantle. East Fremantle 8-9, South a 9-5. And now that margin is only two points in favour of the Bulldogs. Yep, and the big difference in this quarter is that Sterrett is starting to meet the ball. In the second quarter, he made the mistake of hanging back, trying to get the ball to come over the top of the pack. In this third quarter, Sterrett is starting to meet the ball very much as he did in the first quarter, and he looks a lot better for it. East Fremantle have scored the first two goals of the third quarter, and a decisive Brilliant. knock there to Girac, but it comes back to kick it. Three kicks in the opening minutes of this third quarter to Graham Kickett, who's just come onto the ground. Good mark taken back there by O'Sullivan. That hasn't happened too often today. No, he marked over the top of Sam Brelo. O'Sullivan has had a few kicks, despite the fact that Sam Brelo has played well. He kicks back into the centre of the ground. Collard got his fist to the ball. Rioli knew there was a player ahead of the play. That was Sumich, and that's who it was intended for, but Bayless got to it first. Now, they need a long kick here from Bayless. Right back to the goal line it goes. Gaddy is tall and strong and has taken the mark almost on the goal line. Well, that was a real show of strength by Gaddy. He had held his ground very strongly indeed against Baxter and refused to be pushed back any further than he wanted to go. He's not taking much time over this. He wouldn't want to miss it. It was point blank range. And he breaks into a little bit of a donkey gallop there to celebrate that goal, his first in the game. And Souths get their 10th, their 10-5, each from Adelaide 9. And to South's credit, they've been able to respond to each crisis that has arisen. Oh, I don't think right back with Gavin. There's the mark there by Gaddy, and there you see Baxter trying to move him back through the goals, but he wasn't going to be moved back. But this is all because of the Morris Rioli. His handball out of the centre has been quite outstanding, and he gets the ball out of the, the hard ball out of the pack better than anyone I've seen in this game. He's, he's absolutely lightning when he gets in and out, and uh, the ball's gone before anybody knows it. Edwards doing well in the run too, Keith, in the middle of the ground. He's a hard man to beat. Up he goes again. Look at that. Easy as you like, although South couldn't take advantage of it. Amarani boots uh, East Fremantle forward. McDonald, though, bursting through half-back. Kicks to half-forward. No mark is taken. It puts uh, Edgar the destroyer. Picked up by Waterman. He kicks out towards half-forward. Cole! Spoiled in the last moment by Fitzpatrick. Come crumbs to Quill. He kicks into the pocket. Bushel unattended. Oh, dropped the sitter. Jeez, allows Edwards was in, who soccers it away from him. Goes back, picks up his own footy, and he runs straight into Cooper, shrugged him off easily, rushed him away like a fly. Free kick. High tackle. Oh. Kick. What's it for? Must well, be rolling the ball. Either that or a high tackle, but he's going to bounce it. Uh, high tackle. <laughs> I don't understand the decision. I think he's confused, Trev. There's the bounce. Edwards is on the spot, though, to do the ruck work. Trying to get it down to uh, Mascos. Chipping in was Cooper. Scrambly football in the left full forward pocket. Square up. Umpires picked out another kick to Mascos. Gee, Bushel's made some mistakes today. He's had the opportunity to be a good player, but he's made some mistakes. Pay on now. There's Mascos going towards half back. Look at this. Kicked it into a nest. Waterman. Hand pass to Peak. He gets around Ditchburn. Onto the right boot and Quill outside 50 metres. Uh, that's pretty ordinary football by Mascos. He should know better. The pressure game. You don't play that fancy, pretty stuff across the ground. He's in between the square and the 50-metre arc. He goes for the pass with the pocket, stir it. In front of Fitzpatrick. He still will shoot from outside 50 metres. Well, he's on the lead in this quarter, stir it, and uh, all of a sudden, Ishii Man will have a focal point in attack, and the whole side looks better with uh, stir it leading and going towards the ball. We go very close to kicking a goal here, stir it. Let's watch it. Oh, he's kicked with a man in the mark who was not flushed, but he was good enough to come back, couldn't recover in time. Sterrett's got it again. Take two for Sterrett, but it's away to the right-hand side, out of bounds on the pull. 
Wilson with a free kick for the Bulldogs. Gee, I thought young Fitzpatrick was a bit unlucky not to get a free kick then. It looked like Sterrett went in on him high. Nevertheless, Souths have possession. I'm sure they'd prefer the kick further up the ground. Boy, Edwards did that beautifully. I thought he was trying to knock it to the boundary line. Kicks up towards centre wing. Bayless is there with him, Edgar. Edgar with the best recovery at ground level, but turns straight into a solid tackle from Collard. Two big fellas out there wrestling for it. It comes to Edgar. Back infield, it goes to McLean. He's having trouble picking it up. Can eventually, but he's almost back on the half-back line now. His hand pass was smothered. Knocked on by Geary. He knew Rioli was out wide. Now a chance for Collard. They're finessing close to the boundary line. They're under plenty of pressure, but that's a good kick. And Sam Brailo is the target again. Beautifully played. Too far out to score, but he will put this on the goal line. Now, Souths have cleared out of the goal square and left Big Gaddy back there. That's good tactics. He's got Baxter with him, but one-on-one, -on -one, he's got a height advantage. Sam Brailo getting very close to the man on the mark. Gaddy at the back, Sumich in front, and Baxter, Baxter takes the mark. Well, good, good recovery mark. for the big fellow, wasn't it? Yes. Good hand pass two to Ellis. Now, East Fremantle running out of defence. Goes short to the half-back line, and the mark has been taken by Durak. Back in towards the centre of the ground now. This is Derricourt. East Fremantle using it well. Edgar's loose on centre wing. He will go towards the half-forward line. Only Edwards to beat, and he's starting to slow down. In towards full forward and Browning. South Fremantle got their hands to it first. Bushell pushed over. No, he wasn't. He was held when he didn't have it. There you see an East Fremantle player in the hands of a trainer, O'Sullivan. Now that would be a blow, even though Sam Brelo's done well. They have to improvise at centre-half back. That will start to tax their resources. Yes, well, uh, Bushell just helping that free kick a little bit, but he was, was there, no doubt. 11 minutes into the third quarter as Bushell shoots, and I think he's shot accurately. Or has he? Yes, he has. He's got it, so they're going goal for goal through this third term. South at 10-5, East Fremantle at 9-9. Yep, and a uh, good passage to play that by East Fremantle, moving it down through Durack, and uh, they use the ball very well indeed. South a little bit careless in their defensive play then, and it looks like O'Sullivan may be coming off the field, and that is bad luck. It looks like uh, Browning might have to go back to centre-half back for mine, but we'll wait and see. Right, he's coming on. They meet, need to make the ball the move pretty quickly. Ryder going straight to centre-half back. Well, he'll do that initially. No, Ellis. Sorry, and Ryder on the Sumich. That's a risk, isn't it? Edwards wins the tap again out of the centre, but it's the Sharks who clear it away. Waterman to centre-half forward and stare it out underneath the football, carried underneath by McDonald. Running across the half-back line is Ditchburn. The kick's a shocker, though. It's bouncing around at left half forward. Chance for Quill. Closing his kick it. Paddled away towards Geary. He runs into Broadbridge. Back comes kick it. In board he goes to Ditchburn. He runs into Durack. Kick it again under the right boot. Towards half forward. Sumich, no mark taken. With him as Ryder. Sumich goes to the ground. Bayon calls the umpire. Now it's with Bayless. From right half forward, he pulls it back, but it won't come back far enough. And one behind the result. He's a lot more desperate today, Sumich, than the last time we saw him. He did well to get that ball moving for South. Derek Court to put the ball back into play for East Fremantle. Finally goes down the middle of the ground and Waterman. Playing a good quarter, Waterman. He's doing well out of the middle of the ground. Left foot drop punt towards the centre. Edwards is there in the pack. Couldn't take the mark. He's wrestling with Durak. <laughs> Durak should have got a free kick. Hand pass by Fitzpatrick to Geary. On it goes to Collard. He tried to knock it across, but it was intercepted by McLean. And McLean with a big foot pass has found Quill at left half back. Hasn't done badly, McLean, for a new player. Sense of deja vu here. It reminds me a little bit of Saturday. The experience starting to come to the fore. Lucky this to get Durak. away with that, Durak. A little bit of a nudge forward. Now, Sterrett on the break again. Beautiful kick. Oop. Oops. Pump action pistol there. <laughs> one player, too. Some, some have been biting his elbow, I think, Well, <laughs> One player who can mark in front of his body, too, Keith. He's many a beautiful player when he gets in front. Well, the second quarter, he was playing behind, and uh, Isham Adel didn't have any focal point in attack, but his stats would be looking pretty good this quarter, I think, Ken. Four marks this quarter to Ray Sterrett. He didn't take a mark in the first half. Boundary thrown at left half forward for East Fremantle. Three-point margin, South's hanging on grimly. Bushell collided with Fitzpatrick, but gets it wide to Jet. What a renowned goal kicker. Not a renowned left footer. And South Fremantle will break it up. Collard out of deep defence. One it goes to Geary. Kick it is running loose in the centre of the ground. He went, waited far too long. 
Now a chance up on the half forward line for Sam Brello. With him as Ryder. They've made the move. Sam Brello did brilliantly then. He's 55 metres out. That's a terrible kick. But Sumich will be onto it. And oh, he couldn't pick it up. He would have gone to an open goal. Still there a chance. They've got it. It's Bayless who's kicked it, I think. Gee, they made hard work of it in the end, but they got it. That's the main thing. They stretch their line, their lead to nine points, 11-6 to 9-9. Souths just in front, but it's been a very entertaining third quarter, 15 minutes gone. Yeah, and I thought that was well played by Sam Brayler. It wasn't the best kick of all time, but the positioning was good, and he set it up for South. Silvers just couldn't handle the ball, and all of a sudden, Bayless was there to give support. But that's the place to score goals from in front of goal, and his thought was right, the kick not quite right, but the result is what they wanted. Gee, that could be a bad loss for East Fremantle. Sullivan going off the ground. Look at the thumb from Edward. South Fremantle won't wake up to that, though. Again, it's Waterman who clears. Broadbridge Helbing on in position. Play on advantage rule paid. Look at the pace of Quill. Left foot into the pocket. Mascos. Good mark. Safe mark. Good mark. South Fremantle running loose across the half-back line. Big quarter Edwards. from Edwards. Short pass into the middle. Looking for the umpire. Sisgiri to full forward. Out comes Grant. Too high for him. At the back, Ellis and Gaddy. <laughs> Ellis. <laughs> But that wouldn't have wanted to go out of bounds, would it? Like a Liverpool goalkeeper, <laughs> made safe. Ellis to the outer side of the ground. Good kick, well weighted, finds Derricourt. Collard fell over. Derricourt hugging the boundary. Bounces up nicely for Waters, though. Over the top. Oops, hand uh... pass. Shark by Bomber. He's kicked the half forward now. Fitzpatrick is there. He's from Adel player with the ground. Cooper. Neat hand pass from Fitzpatrick. Finds Waters. Into the middle of the ground, Good Edwards. vision. Play on, the overlap coming from Pittsburgh. From the middle of the ground, the pass to half forward. Bouncing free, out comes Derricourt. Play. Good desperation. Chipping in Rioli. Couldn't get his hand pass in. Now it's Ryder, tackled when he didn't have it. Derricourt. In come the South Fremantle troops. Being held to him, says the umpire. What a passage of football that little lot was. The umpire did the right thing and let it go. And uh, absolutely top footy. Bounce just inside 50 metres for South Fremantle. Up goes Gaddy, wins the tap. Indecisive football, Collard uh, nestled over it. And that'll be another bounce. Well, it's a pretty vital start stage of the game here. About 15 minutes to go in this third quarter. Eric Collard with his right thigh bandaged. Now it's Baxter opposed by Gaddy. Oh, strength from Baxter. Yeah, well played. Kicks the ball towards half back. Waters with good use of the body. Allows Peek in though. He's forced to hand pass. Now it's with Jeff. Where can he go? He tries to pull it around his body. Only as far as Waters. There's danger. Waters kicks high towards the pocket. Sumich is there. And from the back, Bayless over the top of the soaring mark. Kick from outside 50, sets it up in the square for Gatti, with him as back. Oh. Gatti almost a miraculous mark, but took it through by San Bruno, and he's now one of the best men on the ground. No, it's not allowed. Oh, no. Well, you can't play on of a mark. He paid the mark. He paid, he paid the, the mark. mark, yeah. Well, in that case, it was an outstanding mark. Yeah, I didn't think he marked it, did you? To be honest. Well, it was a great attempt, but I didn't think he could try it. We won't be able to see that again, the mark. He really has got tremendous strength up there, and that contest with he and Baxter is outstanding. There's the kick. He hasn't missed it. That's a goal. Gaddy's kicked two for the quarter now, and South Fremantle continue to surge forward. They're 12-7-79. The Sharks are 9-9-63. 16 points the difference. Here comes that mark again for the big fellow. Uh, there's Gaddy. Oh, it's a pretty doubtful mark for mine. And, uh, Should have I been a goal to Sam Brown. Yeah, I thought the umpire earned in playing that mark because he never had control at any stage. It didn't make any difference to the result, but uh, an error for mine from the umpire. And suddenly the margin is 13 points. It's like a grand final. Oh, yeah. Is that what the GF was for? Sam Brano knocking it on to the advantage of Geary. Good footy. South going forward again. Steady's in the pocket, he's 45 metres out, it's coming back! Oh, telling Mark by Baxter. Timely was perhaps a better word. Derricourt, not a very good kick. He had Edgar 10 metres short of Bayless, and uh, I think he would have been better off looking for him. Interesting, while at the last centre bounce, where Waterman has been taking all of Edwards' knock, Rioli across there on that occasion, and he took Edwards' knock. Now, Gatti, who's proving to be something of a, a bonus up at full forward by kicking goals, came in to do the ruck work there for Souths, and Souths have got a free kick. It's going to be taken by Geary. 
one must say that Baxter's not doing all that badly at Bailus. full back. Sorry, Keith, yeah, Bayless has the free kick. Yep. Baxter's been pretty strong back there. He was unlucky to have that mark played against him. Geary this time, oh, he should have held that. No oh, different when Gaddy he would have been paid probably. Edgar, and there's an East Romantle player down holding his head well behind play. I didn't see what happened. I think it was in that marking contest. Play. McDonald comes across to meet it. Gee, did well then. Back he goes to centre wing to half forward and Bayless. Edgar up was able to spoil. It's knocked away from Rioli. East Fremantle barging the ball forward. Durack caught. Hand pass comes towards it. Goes to an Holding the ball. Is, he's penalised. Just took too long. And he's a little unlucky because the umpires have really been letting the game go. And there has been occasions in this game where they have penalised players who have hold on, held on to the ball a little long. And Craig Edwards said he had me by the neck. 79 plays 63, South's lead, 19 minutes gone in the third quarter. Almost a good mark to Collard. Chance at the back for Edwards. He's done some good stuff midfield in this quarter. Peak, a hurry kick towards full forward. is a good one. Riders down there with him, Wilson. Both players lost their footing. In goes Miller, a Cooper, I'm sorry, who got it to Broadridge. Back to Cooper. That's a pretty good effort. It's coming across towards Sterrett. He controlled it brilliantly. Gets rid of his opponent. Looks for a lead in at centre half forward and Durak is unattended. He makes 10 metres. Has he gone too far? No. And has missed. Yeah, I thought he'd kick that. Wasted opportunity there, Bob. Yes, he did the right thing, I think. He was just outside his kicking distance if he'd gone back. Did the right thing in playing on, but he should have done better once he kicked it. He kicked eventually from about 40 metres. 12-7 to 9-10, South's in front. Wilson favours the member's wing this time. Edwards is the target, oh. uncontested. He's having a big quarter, Craig Edwards. What are his stats, Ken? This quarter he's taken three marks and had four kicks and he's made seven effective ruck knockouts. Mascos to Geary, now kick it. Gee, he's had an effect on the game too, Keith. Yes, he is, and uh, one tends to get him mixed up with Morris Rioli on occasions. A little bit taller, that's all. Kick the attacking side of the square, best man on the ground, what his boots it forward, Sam Raylo! Oh, great mark. Having a birthday. And this has been the best game as far as marking is concerned we've seen all year. Yeah, by far. And the Sembrello's been one of the players who's taken some absolutely outstanding marks. Keith, you can only take a mark like that if you keep your eyes on the ball because that bounced a good uh, metre and a half away from him and he had to lunge after it. He had to know where it was to keep, pull it in the second time. Yeah, well, I think he knew where it was going. The desperation was there, though, wasn't it? He knew got a mark uh, 30 metres out from goal is almost certainly a goal when uh, he can kick like he can. How many games of football do you see, do you see when game is dominated by centre-half forwards like Sambrano and Sterrett. Not too often. Not often. Cooper off and Miller on. Sambrano's shot at goal, though, is not equal to the occasion. No, One behind only. It, didn't he? He just stabbed at that instead of kicking right through the line. Derek Court to bring the ball back into play. We haven't got a replay of that mark. Lead is on. Lovely Half kick. Back. Amaranti. Nicely weighted kick back into play. Way to go. Rushes kick it aside and then kicks towards the wing position. Again, the target is Sterrett, G Strong, didn't take the mark. Wrong foot's McDonald, good shepherding by Durak. Gets around Sumic, oh, rather kick yeah. the shocker. And uh, Sumic has gone down. Yeah. Yes, uh, Sterrett delivered now he's a, into, uh, Sterrett. a short right to the midriff, but I think Sumic made it look a lot worse than it was. That is a ball. Yeah, that was... Uh, Scotty Waters is in there. Scotty Waters wants to get out of there, he'll get hurt. Edwards will break it up for South. That Get out, Scotty Waters. No need for you there at all. The umpire's done the right thing in awarding the free kick, but I think Servich made it look a lot worse than it was. It's Gaddy and Jeff getting mixed up. Well, it'll be interesting to see who is favoured by a bubble like this. East Humanity behind on the scoreboard by 16 points. Keith, what happens here? The kick... The Went Manor out on the ball. No, no, he's awarded a free kick, but he's awarded a relay kick backward of the play. Surely the kick should be taken. The ball went out, of, out on the full when yeah. Sterrett kicked it, and that's the kick that's being paid. That's the mascot's kick, Bob. Oh. He's got the footy. The other umpire indicated a kick down the ground. No, the ball definitely went oh. out on the full. OK. It would only be about a 15-metre difference in any way. There's the kick from Mascos to half forward. Gaddy in the air. No mark. Browning claimed it. Wasn't paid. Oh, and passes too. away towards Bush, who's under pressure. In chips Jeff. Always uh, robbed of it by Rioli. Still they oh, have Rioli. a look at that. <laughs> Brilliant by Rioli, but there's nobody home. Derek caught the safe mark for the Sharks. Across the face he goes. Brings the ball around the members' wing. Not a good kick, but Bushel's there. Oh, <laughs> the head. Pass to Derek Court, who followed the play. Across half-back he goes to Browning. 
routing the defensive side of the square. Still he goes. Didn't come back for him, but now he hand passes to Jurak. Jurak, centre half forward. Kicks into the pocket, but it's all South Fremantle. Good pressure. And the mark taken by Mascot. Should have played on, maybe. Great running by Scotty Waters. Yeah, though. great pressure. Now this is Wilson, also good running from fullback. Look at the pass. Sumit should have held that. Bounced off his chest. Tackled by Ellis. Round it his right foot. Oh. There's a player loose here, Sam Braino. He gets onto the left foot. It's not a good kick, though. The ball at half forward. Ryder bursting through. Good dash. Goes out wide. He's looking for Bomber. With him is Collard. Great battle out there. Chipping in now is Miller with good pace. Good handball. The backup was from Edgar. Tried to do too much. Forced the hand pass away. Worst foul. Tackled strongly. Cold it is with the football. Out wide to Miller. On it goes to Sterrett inside 50. There's the shot on goal. A great kick from Sterrett. A goal to East Fremantle. A hectic passage of play. Sterrett now has kicked two. East Fremantle with that goal. We belong to 10-10. They trailed south 12-8, and we're about to go into time on in this third oh, quarter. Absolutely terrific quarter of football, absolutely superb. Look at the desperation here. That's young Cole getting the handball out. Ed Gary up there, and Sterrett finishing up with the ball, and he makes no mistake. It's been a big quarter from him, but a big quarter from both sides. Outstanding pressure football. Almost 25 minutes gone in this third quarter. 12-8 to 10-10. That's a 10-point margin to South Fremantle. Umpire Ball puts it down in the centre. Edwards and Baxter are opposed. Again, Edwards wins the knock. Again, Rioli takes it. Again, he gets it backward to the play to kick it. My word, they're doing it well. Down towards half forward. Sam Brello's there, knocked away by Browning. He now finds himself on the back line. And the throw will take place at right half forward for South Fremantle. Each Fremantle's Achilles heel is hurting very badly in this quarter. That's the lack of ruck power. And Edwards is absolutely dominated. Gatti and Durak this time. Gatti wins the ball to the side of the pack. Collard runs onto it oh, and then ran without it. Oh. Was that kicking in danger? It should have been and could have been. Browning was the player who got it clear. Now they bring it away through Amaranti to East Fremantle up to the half forward line. But Wilson is strong opposed to Waterman. Wilson letting know Waterman that he's out there. Why kick it there? It's given East Fremantle a chance when they didn't have any at one stage in this passage. In comes McLean. Knocks it to his own advantage. It's 10 metres clear of the pack. McLean looks for Peak on the half forward line. With him is Collard. Peak and Collard together. Collard Too wins quick. out again. He's been he's done a good job out there in this term. They, Rioli getting it infield. A beautiful hand pass and South race it forward again. They've got it at half forward with Geary. Geary's got no one to give it to. Hooks it hard and high. They've marked well on the half forward line this afternoon. Good but this, oh, out. Almost. Spoiled by his own man. What is a chance? Hand passes to Derricourt. Derricourt can't maintain his footing and in they go on top of him. And a bounce down at centre half forward for South. For the first time this year, I feel as though I've been to the footy. What's the best game you've seen this year, Well. <laughs> Not well, even a difficult... Well, no, no answer needed. What did you pay to come in? <laughs> Gaddy, dispossessed, play on, Browning to Ellis. They rebounded off his boot. Ellis kicks it high in the air. Peak sets himself, couldn't take the mark. At the back now, a chance for Collard. With him is Edgar. Bounce comes back towards Edgar. He gives it to McLean. He's got time to boot his from out of trouble. He kicks up along the wing position. Ward Miller oh, waited for it again. Got a push in the back from Collard. Chris well, Collard, now in number three. Well played by Young Miller. A bit of feeling creeping into the game. Kick into the pocket, and the mark's been taken out there by Waterman. Push or loose. That's the way it goes. No, it goes towards half forward. Over the head of uh, Baxter, picked up by Jeff. He screws back on goal. Broadbridge. Oh, the crumbs. He's dispossessed in a flash. McDonald swooping on the football. Leaves it away for the Bulldogs. Wilson, a great attempt to mark. Sterrett comes in. Sterrett goes to the ground from a push. And that'll be a boundary throw in. That could be a very dangerous move. Very dangerous move indeed by uh, Tony Fitzpatrick. Knocking it out. Stare a bit unlucky too, Keith. Yes. The one at the back. Baxter, good tap to the side. Oh. Sharked away by McDonald. Hand pass comes back to Baxter. He knocks it to the advantage of Waterman. This way, that away. Play. Gets out of trouble and a neat foot Beautiful pass. Play. And this is Jeff now with the football. Been around a while, Jeff. He knows what it's all about. Carrying a bit of condition as Wally Foreman mentioned. There's the kick to the top of the square. Broadbridge has got a fly. He was held by Fitzpatrick. Through they go again. Now the umpire's oh. picked out a kick this time. Maybe it's the uh, the second one. It's a handy kick. It's 
going to Miller for a high tackle as applied by Cliff Collard. Well, it was there. There's no doubt it was there, but the way the umpires have been playing, umpiring and letting the game flow, I have to say that Collard was a smite unlucky there, but a very vital kick in this game, just 10 points the difference. This would make it four, and uh, an outstanding quarter of footy. Must be nearly over. 30 metres, 30 metres out, Gavin Miller, right foot drop punt, going goalward, but it is fading away and hits the post. South Fremantle supporters love it. Oh, bad blow here. Well, not necessarily a bad blow, but Ditchburn having to come off and Worsfold about to come back on. And he's not well either, Worsfold, no, is he? No, that's right. There's Geary making the lead. Ball out to half back now for South Fremantle. Hugging the boundary line is Geary. It's bouncing free. There's a foot race on now. The first to arrive out there, Fainas. Knocks it over at three-quarter time. Nine points the difference. South at 12 8, 80. And in that quarter, they added three goals, three, while East Fremantle go along to 10 goals, 11, and they added four goals, two. So nine points the difference at three-quarter time in favour of the Bulldogs, the home side. For South Fremantle, Gatti and Sumich and Grant have all kicked two. Singles to Rioli, Geary, Edwards, Bayless and Sambrello. And for East Fremantle, Peak has kicked three, two apiece to Sterrett and Broadbridge, and singles to Bushel, Cole and Durack. And Scotty Waters, Ken, what a game he's playing today. Yes, well, he didn't have uh, 14 kicks in the third quarter like he did in the second quarter, but number 31 for South Fremantle, the 19-year-old Scott Waters, continued to play well in the third quarter, Trevor. He had another four kicks, and of those four kicks, three went to a teammate, and at three-quarter time, Scott Waters there, uh, seven marks, 24 kicks, and five effective hand passes. And I'd say with the running that he's been doing, Ken, obviously those muscles could be tightening up a little. Yes, but they're only 19-year-old muscles, so uh, they've got a better chance uh, to keep going than some of the older players, uh, like Rioli in that quarter, and he had one kick, even though his hand passing was excellent. It's interesting to note, we caught a glimpse of Morris Rioli then, he's had eight kicks for the match and ten effective hand passes, and, and he doesn't seem to uh, want to kick the ball very much, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Rioli plays out the last 30 minutes of this game after a very hectic derby. Right, some more uh, position getters on the ground. Looking through the south side, Rioli with eight kicks and ten hand passes. Kickett came onto the field in the third quarter for the first time and on a wing, and he had six kicks and two hand passes. Brad Collard's had eight kicks and five hand passes. Craig Edwards, the ruckman, seven marks, ten kicks, ten effective ruck knockouts and four effective hand passes. Gatti's had four kicks and five ruck knockouts. Geary, six marks and 15 kicks. Amoroso, three. Worsfold, three only. Derek Collard, four with two hand passes. Bayless has had 11 kicks. Grant, five. 13 to Sumich with seven marks. Sam Brailo at centre half forward, 10 marks and 14 kicks. What a game he's played, Ken. Yes, with 10 marks they've all been outstanding efforts too. Ditchburn's had 7 kicks, 6 to McDonald, 5 to Wilson, 7 to Mascot. Cliff Collard, 5 kicks and 3 hand passes and Fitzpatrick, 4. Maurice Mantle, Cooper's had 11 kicks, Quill on a wing's had 12, Miller's had 9, Baxter's had 5, Durack, 7 marks and 9 kicks, Broadbridge, 11, 12 to Peak with 5 marks, Bushel, 8, 3 to Cole, O'Sullivan off injured 6, 5 to Ellis, Waterman, 13 kicks, he had uh, 8 in that quarter, 4 to Edgar, uh, six marks and ten kicks to Derricourt. Jep, five. Amaranti had nine kicks, five in that quarter. Browning's had only three kicks for the match and three hand passes. McLean's had six kicks and Revis Riders had one kicks. The free kick tally, South 12, East Fremantle 11. As stats being kept today, again, of course, by Ken Casillas. It's nine points the difference in favour of South Fremantle. There's not a great deal of breeze around Keith. It seems to have dropped away again. So the, sta the uh, last quarter... Uh, I don't think the breeze will favour any side in particular. No, I don't think so. And what a hectic quarter of football. Certainly the best best quarter of footy we've seen this year and the best game of football. It's been absolutely outstanding and uh, worthy of a game uh, years ago when West Australia football was a lot stronger. But both sides have been complimented at this stage because uh, they've really given it their all. And uh, in that quarter near the end, there was some real feeling creaking into the game, wasn't there? There was a few backhanders going, and uh, that was desperation. Pl players just trying to win the ball and win the game for their side. It's great to see South Fremantle on the, on the comeback trail because they've been in the doldrums for a while. They've had this potential now for a couple of years, and their players are just starting to come of age, and uh, they're rising to the occasion. They're answering everything East Fremantle can throw at them today, and they have some very exciting players out there. But I, I thought in, uh, in that quarter, I thought it was an outstanding quarter for big Craig Edwards. He really 
is like a good wine. He is maturing nicely with age, and uh, he absolutely dominated the ruck in that quarter. And of course, that is Eshan Adel's Achilles' heel, a lack of class ruckman. And uh, even though Baxter and Durak tried pretty hard, Edwards was uh, clearly dominant. And uh, had he been uh, more accommodated at ground level with the centre bounces, then South could have run away with the with the game in that quarter. But I thought Waterman set it up very well. He took most of Edwards' knocks from the centre, and it wasn't until late in the quarter that Rioli was able to get around and take advantage of Craig Edwards' uh, splendid knocking. I thought Sam Brelo played another outstanding quarter. Every time I see this lad play, I like him. He's a key position player. I've seen him more often in defence than attack, but gee, after seeing him at centre-half four today, the way he wants the football, the clean way he takes his marks, the lovely kicking skills he has, then uh, I think I'd like to see him into attack. I really believe that he, he will be wasted in defence if they use him there too often. Rioli's work, uh, he doesn't, uh, as Ken said, he doesn't want to kick the ball a lot today, and Ken, with that uh, left foot heavily bandaged, or left boot heavily bandaged, it does indicate that maybe not at all is not well with that left foot, but by oh, Jove, he's clever with his hands. The way he paddles the ball on for other players and, and wins the hard ball, I mean, a very effective player in that quarter. He, he combined very well with Kickett in the centre of the ground. He came onto the ground and it appeared that he'd been there all day and I thought he played a very good quarter. Waters continued to be a good player in midfield and I thought Brad Collard did a pretty good job on Brian Peake and uh, he was the player that uh, Ishmael went for on many occasions and Collard just had a little bit too much pace for Peake. He was able to get the front position. I thought Sterrett came back to very good form in that quarter for Ishmael. He presented himself in front on most occasions and with his strength he was able to take very strong marks in front. I thought Broadbridge continued to be a very good player and uh, I like the look of him. He's another young player, an up and coming player that uh, eventually I think will play on our state side and become a strength in West Australia football. Waterman uh, did some good work in that quarter, especially at the centre bounces. Even though Edwards was winning the ball, I thought Waterman on most occasions was able to take the ball away with that raking left foot of his Peaky, even though he had a hard job uh, with Brad Collard out there, was still an effective player. I thought Amarandi did well in that quarter also, but uh, it was good to see Eastern out lift in the third quarter. They kicked 4-2 to South 3-3. And uh, they couldn't get on top. They tried all they knew to put a good third quarter together. They knew that a good third quarter was absolutely necessary if they were going to win this game. They put together a good third quarter. Players who'd been down lifted, but South still had the answers. And they had the answers because big, uh, Craig Edwards is absolutely dominating the ruck. And uh, that made a big difference. And, of course, that allowed big Gordon Gatty to do some very effective work down at fullback. The game set up. The experiences with Eastern Mantle in big games the desire definitely with South from Adelaide. No, they've got to win this game to stay in touch with the four. They lead by nine points. It's a handy lead, and it'll be interesting to see who runs off best. South's led by eight points at quarter time, 14 points at half time, nine points at three quarter time. Gives you some idea of just how tight this game has been throughout. And there's a dogged tussle in the middle of the ground to start the final quarter. Another bounce down, 12-8 South from Adelaide, East from Adelaide, 10-11, a nine point margin. Souths perhaps fighting for season 88 here. If they were to lose, they'd find themselves two clear games out of the four. Decisive knock that time by Edwards towards centre-half forward and Sam Brelo. He's in fact kicked it the wrong way and it will land with Edgar. Well, that's a really bad mistake to start the last quarter for Souths as the kick goes down towards full forward. Tussle on down there. Is there a free kick? Not paid. In comes Peak. Knocks it clear of the pack. Souths tying it up back there. Fitzpatrick has it now, he can't break clear with it, in comes Mascos, Miller is there, still they fight for it, still no one able to break away with it cleanly, this is Broadbridge, close to the line, and Cliff Collard runs it out of play. Well, Sam Brelo ran from centre-half forward to centre-half back to try and redeem himself, he was under pressure when he kicked it, came off the side of the boot and landed with Edgar. Edwards is there, pushes his opponent into the ball, chance for Broadbridge, Gets the hand pass back towards the boundary line. In towards full forward go East from Adel, but he's well and truly offline. And one point results. It's an eight point margin. That's the first score in the final quarter. Two minutes have been played and still South hang on to their narrow lead. Bayless. Prominent tattoo on the left shoulder. It's up customer the ball back into play, out of sight of the ground, Broadbridge the big leap, at the back though it's Brad Collard, over the top, Edwards, Waters, Edwards and Waters combining, now Brad Collard, he's tackled strongly out there by Bushel, it comes back to Waters though, 
He hugs the boundary from the back. Browning would have been to the back of Sam Brano. Out Sam Morandi. With him out there, Rioli. Again along the boundary line. Good pick up from Jeff. He kicks high to centre half forward. It's all south. And the mark taken by Wilson. Overlap coming from Cliff Collard out of the fence. He's now at right centre wing. Good run by South Fremantle up towards half forward. Lurking there is Sumich. Bursting through here is Geary. Left foot kick towards full forward. Bounces awkwardly away from Worstfold. Ryder looking for the boundary. Picked up by Grant. Inboard to Derek Collard. He got a high tackle. Now he sets it up at the top of the square. Sumich knocked away though by Jurak. Chance for Browning. Coming through strongly, Sam Brano, dispossessed by Quill. Crumbs come to Baxter. Out wide, across the face. East Fremantle out of trouble. This is McLean. He's going for a gallop. He's now at right half back. It's been a good performance by the youngster. He kicks to the centre. Now Cliff Collard. Fitzpatrick. In board, Mascos, you're in trouble. He was met by Edgar. Coming in, Brad Collard now. He's tackled from behind. Umpire says he's got a push in the back. Player and didn't push him in the back. And I thought that was a very good tackle indeed. And very unlucky to be penalised. Short passes on. Mascos, unattended. He's at left centre wing for the Bulldogs. Goes for the bounce to steady now. Rioli, attacking side of the square towards full forward. Westfold. He's almost at ground level. And he's uh, marked it on his chest. Geez, hobbling badly. He's been in trouble almost from the word go, Well, Yep. The fact that player Boris Rioli he saw worse fall out the corner of his eye. Take a good kick to score here. He's 50 metres out from goal. Number 18 for South Fremantle. Drop punts on its way. I don't think it'll reach. They'll contest in the square. The ball rolling free. Coming through McLean, he overran it. Now he's a hand pass straight out of bounds. Oh, and he's oh. going to get penalised. With no good arguing. The standard was set early, and this is what can happen. And this is where a good precedent was set early in the game. Look at the angle for Kiri. He's going to have an attempt at it. It's right across the face. We'll wait on it. Out of bounds on the full. And I think uh, who was it there? Durak made that decision. <laughs> I think the umpire was going to wave a point. He <laughs> saw Durak kick a goal from there earlier in the match. One of the goals of the game. Eight points is the margin was nine points at three-quarter time so little has changed as Ryder comes off and Cooper goes back on for East Fremantle as the ball goes out of play on South Fremantle's right half forward flank. Where will Cooper go? Ryder's, Ryder's come out of defence and uh, Cooper will pick worse fold up. That's not a bad move actually. Now Baxter is 27, Edwards is 10 and Baxter wins it but is taken by Rioli. Backward of the play by 20 metres to kick it. He picks it up cleverly, he's still got plenty of work to do, but Edwards is loose. They don't want to mark him in the centre of the ground, they haven't since half-time. High towards full forward, Gatti at the back, picks it up, gets a good hand pass across to Geary. Infield he goes to oh. Pollard, was that a high tackle? No. Holding the ball, good decision. Good decision. So East Fremantle will get out of trouble by way of that free kick. They swing it across to the members' side of the ground, Baxter is there with him. His, uh, is Sumich, who applied a good tackle. Now Ellis, closing on him, was worse fold. Ellis has it, gets the hand pass back towards the teammate. That player in Bushel puts it up on the centre wing. East Fremantle have the run now. Peak is loose at centre half forward. That's the way the kick's gone. It went one hand, comes down to Miller. He's only got Wilson to beat. Runs towards the open goal. The margin is two points at Fremantle Oval. East Fremantle get the first goal of the last quarter. And uh, it's anybody's game now. Well, it has been anybody's game all day, but it's really wide open now. 80 to 78. And beautifully played by Peak. Only going one hand, he knew exactly what he was doing. Put it down in the path of Miller. And uh, the shepherding quite superb here. There's the shepherd coming from Sterrett. He keeps Wilson out of the way. And Miller pinged straight to the middle. Well played by Ellis in defence then too. I thought he was cool in a crisis. Two points in favour of the Bulldogs, centre bounce, Edwards, what a brilliant rack knock, McGeary, a tackle. tackle by Jeff, suck it away by Edwards, he followed the ball through well, Beautiful now it's Waters, one of the best on the ground, 55 metres out, it'll be shepherded it through, no, Sam Brano's touched it on the goal line, and it's one behind, I thought he might have enough strength Gatti. to hold him back, Gatti, Gatti. was it? Yeah, he, uh, he wasn't quite sure what to do at the finish, he was shepherding early, 
and then uh, he realised that uh, the other guy could touch it, so he went for the mark. This foul will bring it in. Derek Court brings it back into play and finds Baxter. Baxter to half-back. Target out here is Edgar. He never played a bad game, Baxter, for mine. Neither is Edgar. Wrong foot Brad Collard onto the right boot, up towards the wing. Coming through peak with him is Fitzpatrick. A bit of difference in years there. This is McLean. Tackled from behind by Fitzpatrick. They're fighting for the ball at right <laughs> centre wing. Out goes Fitzpatrick. Hey, what a game this is. Absolutely sensational from start to finish. Well, he was uh, pressuring McLean. McLean said, get off. South just starting to look a little exactly bit weary to me. Who? South. Edwards has lost all his run. You watch him and Baxter. Baxter. Now, Baxter with a free kick. Done a good job today, Baxter. He's fought pretty hard, whether on the ball or in defence. Edwards tries to knock it away. I think he hit Baxter in the midriff. That kicks a wobbly one towards half forward. And getting underneath it is Geary or Wilson. Wilson it is. Collard is loose. Kick to clears Collard. Edwards floating in. Sam Brado is two. No mark taken. Now it's with Collard. Socket away by Baxter. Chance to kick it. He's pulled off the ball. And he's going to get a free kick. Well, only Rioli would have got that kick. Kick it. It's kick it, is it? Well, I'm wrong again. Get that Liam leads on to Great pass. And Grant leading brilliantly. That was a well-weighted kick from Graham Kickett. Too far out to score. 81 plays 78 in favour of South Fremantle. He's undecided. There's no lead, so he's just going to kick and hope. Who's there? Gaddy. Didn't pay the mark. Comes to Sumich. He palms off a player and kicks fortuitously to Worsfold, who's marked in the square. Luck of fortune. Well, but that's the type of thing that can happen. Uh, there can't be any marks against a defender on that type of thing. No, it's the sort of luck that can win a game, though, Keith. Yeah, but was. It's just that little bit of luck that uh, can go either with or against you. Worst fold for South Fremantle makes no mistake. You couldn't miss from there. South Fremantle stretch the lead now as they go to 13 goals 9. East Fremantle 11 goals 12. 87 plays 78. Nine points of difference. And we played 10 minutes in the last turn. Yeah, but that was a very fortunate free kick from uh, kick in the middle of the ground. He found San Fralo, and then it got all hectic down there with Sumich that drove the pack best. And uh, he was put under plenty of pressure. That's Sumich. Getting, you know? getting to Sumich now, and uh, Sumich kicks while being slung, and bang, on the chest of worst one. Is that true? Could have almost paid that mark to Getty. I think the instrumental player just got his fingers to it first, yeah. Trev. It was a line ball, I agree, but probably a good decision in the circumstances, particularly considering where the uh, incident occurred. Now, Souths were under pressure there initially from that bounce down. In fact, they're still under pressure because Amarandi has the run of the ball, went in on top of an opponent, and the umpire has seen that, I think, and it's going to be a collar. Who no, he's going to bounce it down. Well, I thought the free kick was going to Derek Collard, but the bounce down will take place almost on East Fremantle's left centre wing. The margin at the moment is nine points. This is Broadbridge. Gee, he has been a good contributor today. That's a beautifully weighted kick. Must be a kick. It's not been paid to Peak, who stood his ground well. Hand pass over the top. Chance for Fitzpatrick to tidy it up. Gets the hand pass away to a teammate. This is Derek Collard. Kicks back to the centre of the ground. Brother Pratt standing firm. On goes the hand pass to Mascos. He would want to kick it. They're closing from everywhere. Another hand pass from Gaddy, who got a very late one. Sam Brelo has it. He gets around Edgar. That was unnecessary. Well played, Edgar. Too smart, but one. Browning relieves the pressure. Souths have the numbers. The bounce favours East from Adelaide. Peak in play. The a brilliant knock to Amarandi. He's 55 metres out, and Stewart is loose in the square, but he doesn't need him. It's a goal to Amarandi from 55 metres out, and the margin is three points again, and Fremantle Oval has erupted. Thank you, Brian Peak. Well, take a bow, Stephen Edgar, for mine. South had the run of the ball. His chasing was uh, fanatical. And he finished up breaking it up, number 13, Free Chanel. He's been a real tiger today. In fact, he reminds me of Chris Mainwery. And he was able to break up that South thrust forward. And then you saw Peak intelligently over the top. And Amarani also intelligently going for the open square. The game's still up for grabs. Inspirational goal to East Fremantle. Up goes Gaddy to win the tap. They won most of the bracket out, South Fremantle. Bursting through was worse bold. He knocks it to half forward. Rioli. Great skills from the veteran. He's forced the hand pass. Good tackle by Cooper. Back he comes though. Jurex there as well. Gee, that's good pressure. Good yeah, pressure from East Chanel, isn't it? 
sensational Edgar and then Cooper. Attacking side of the square. Durak. Gatti. Gatti wins the tap to Collard. He boots out through Mantle forward. Up they go. No mark taken. Beat away by McLean. He finds Edgar. Chance now for East Fremantle. They're on the members' wing. Edgar goes for a gallop. He's at right wing off. Great smother from Brad Collard. Goes back to recover the football. And then Ross puts Edgar. What a great piece of play. Now he's down by Amarandi. What a too long. Brother comes in to help. That is, real, and out of bounds. that is real pressure. Pressure is about chasing, tackling and smothering, spoiling, and it's all been on today. Brad Collard hurt in that exchange, Trev. Yeah, some of the players are very tired. This is Jeff Cole. Right wing for East Fremantle. Boots into the 50 metre line. Sterrett setting himself from the side. Almost a good mark to Wilson. Collard bursting through. McDonald went to the ground. What is dispossessed by Miller? Back comes Scotty Waters. He was held with not in position. How many kicks did I get? We kick number 26. What a game. Fantastic performance, isn't it? Into the middle of the ground. Collard. It's a telling kick. This is Derek Collard. He runs through the middle. Goes for the short pass. Swim. Oh, great mark. Finger tip up. 55 metres out. Directly in front. South lead by three points. Changed the jumper, didn't change the fame. Going to use a spiral. Torpedoes on its way, didn't quite get onto it. They'll contest there, Edwards is in the pack. And they're running it through from behind is Cooper. Lovely mark by Peter Sumich. In the star today. Great player. And what's the margin now? Well, four, four points, points in favour of the Bulldogs. Only three goals kick so far in this final quarter. Oh, the bounce. ball lands in no man's oh. land. Chance for South to tie it up. And that's exactly what they've done. We must have a bounce, surely. Yes, there will be a bounce. It's still a long time to go in this quarter, you know. Anyone can win it. Anyone can win it convincingly. 14 minutes have elapsed so far in this final term. Yes, there's plenty of time left in the normal course of events, but there oh, haven't been many goals kicked. Derek Court pulled off the hand pass or swung off it. Kick it, can't pick it up. He's got to get rid of it now. They're in all sorts of strife. Geary has it. He's going to be tackled. That's what they needed. A long kick back towards centre half forward. Push in the back. Play no, player pushed him, didn't he? No, Edwards pushed him clearly. And Edwards is a very tired player. He's played a great game by the same token. Well, there's no doubt about that, but they can't afford to lose his contribution at this stage of the game. Back Miller. towards Miller. A good mark taken by Miller. Gee, I thought he had gone underneath it. Towards centre wing, Broadbridge has been a good player this afternoon, and that's a very good mark. He's playing on McDonald, gets around that player. Back to the half forward line, a tired kick. Edgar coming to meet it. He's oh. hard. It's gone out. No, it went out on the bounce. He's lucky. The boundary umpire was only five metres away, but it looked almost as though it had carried over the line. It has been a very tigerish performance. Gee, this is tough, unrelenting stuff here now. Bump. Less than a goal between them, as there has been since early in this final quarter. Still, Potters was up, giving away inches, but recovers best at ground level. New Geary was loose in the centre of the ground. He got a shocking bounce. That gives East Fremantle a chance through McLean. Yes. Back to centre half forward, and Waterman takes the mark. He kicked the footy. Waterman down towards full forward, looking oh. for Sterrett. Bayless gets in front. Mascos backed his judgment and went with Bayless. That allows him to get to it first. Has it gone out of play? Bushel wants to keep He's it in. It. David now, Bushel has had the ball. He could not wait and make one metre on that ball then. It's 52 metres around from the East Fremantle goal. Gatti gets there. Broadbridge has to do the ruck work against him. To the side of the pack and Bushel has it. Into the pocket. East Waterman. Fremantle players unattended. Waterman to Bushel. Sorry. And Bushel has it now. Bushel called the play on. Goes back towards the goal square. This is tough. Oh, clever mark. Not paid to South. They go for the... Oh, yes, it was paid. I'm sorry. The mark has been paid. Have to be paid. And it's going to Bayless. His strength is proving invaluable. Strength would be more valuable than his fitness at this stage, I'd reckon. Some <laughs> worried looks on supporters' faces there. That's a brilliant mark, Durak. Well, he should have looked like they'll go right to the wire. Mark like that to turn the tide. Broadbridge has made himself available. Geary ran straight into him. Now it's Fitzpatrick. Back comes Broadbridge. Peeking to lend a hand. Was he in the back of Fitzpatrick? Yep, he was. The umpire he was. 
Now he's into his ear. Careful. Careful, Peaky. Oh. That's a slam dunk. And that'll cause a bit of reaction. Peaky's hurt. He's got one of the guys. He's either that or he's asleep. Well, I shouldn't say he's foxy because he might have got a good one, but yeah, I think but he's want, wanting the free kick. There would be no shortage of experience in Brian Peake's tactics. Well, he was certainly upended by Fitzpatrick, wasn't he? Yeah, he was using his feet a little carelessly for mine, Peake. If Fitzpatrick has given away this kick, it will be absolutely stupidity. No, it's gone back to the original decision. Yeah, Peake is all right. These Fremantle supporters don't like that, I don't think. No, he's bringing him back. What's he going to do 50 now? 50 metres. Oh, goodness me. So the break's going south way at the moment. East Fremantle supporters won't like this at all, I wouldn't imagine. So what a great leader score, I missed it. Well, they've seen one of their favourite sons upended. Well, I thought he was using his feet a little carelessly, Trev. There's the kick from Fitzpatrick. Sam Braylo, vice-like grip. Brilliant play um, today, Sam Braylo. South wouldn't want to give those kicks away. He has come of age, this fellow. Look at that, onto the right boot. Who's there for South Fremantle? In chips Baxter, there's a Great kick being paid. Rioli's given the kick away. Yeah, Rioli couldn't get to the front, he pushed Cooper out of the way. Cooper, last line of defence, goes straight up the middle of the ground. Browning will set himself, Sam Brado flew one-handed. Ah, Collard, better judgment at the back, Brad Collard. Attacking side of the square, four points the difference in favour of South. Now Waters on the point of the square. Waters. Kicks towards full forward, but Ellis is in the way. There's a lot of tired players around at the moment, Bob. Sure is, and most of them look to be wearing red and white jumpers. Look at the kick from Ellis. Oh. Straight back to Brad Pollard, the attacking side of the square. Durack punching the air in desperation, in frustration. Well, oh, but Edwards has made himself available. The next lurking goal there. is crucial, I think. He's just lurking in that full forward area and casually strolled out to take a mark on his chest. His eighth mark earlier on you saw Mark Sam Brailo pull down his 11th mark for the match. I don't think I've ever seen a ruckman dominate the play so much as he has today. He really is an outstanding ruckman. Particularly at centre bounce down. 50 metres out, he's kicked it underneath it. It's floating away into the pocket. Sumich rose two buildings high but couldn't put in the mark. Geary was holding the ball for mine. Play on, it's desperation. Rioli goes in strongly. So does Browning. And it's tied up at left full forward. Yeah, long this go on footy. Forward. This is no? the best game of footy I've seen for two years here. Long, long no, time. Longer than that, well. I reckon there's 14 or 15,000 here by now, too. You've only been calling for 34 years, well. <laughs> there's the bounce. Jeb out. Uh, Great back. Knock. Knocked over by Edwards, though. Kicked forward by Eastbury Man. Two big boys. Almost a one handed a Durak. Knocked away from him by Gaddy. Picked up by oh, McLean. He hasn't done bad. Kicked the half back. What is camped underneath it? He's taken the mark. It's ninth mark. Let me go, Bomber, he says. He's growing up, isn't he, Scotty Waters? Kick number Waters. 29. Kick into the pocket. Setting himself Geary. Oh, go, they say. Go. 55 metres out into the pocket to Sam Brado. Oh. Should have marked it. This allows Cole in, and he's knocked it over the line and out of bounds. Four points of difference in favour of South. And we've win. played 20 minutes in the last two. He won't win it. One quick transference of play. Next Bingo. goal. Next goal is just absolutely crucial. Even though there could be as long as 10 minutes to play, these two sides have just fought doggedly with no goal coming at either end of the ground for the last 10 minutes. And the next goal will be just heart destroying as far as, or soul destroying as far as the opposition is concerned. Now Graham Kickett has 15 metres to himself. Amarandi closing, short kick has found Geary, and Souths, who have done all the attacking, must get a goal. They look a bit more organised to me than East Humanity. But if it goes to the other end after the possessions they've had and the opposition score, East Fremantle score, I really think it would be the end. Lovely pass. Grant has it. I can think it would be Grant in a couple of years. Well, he's shooting from about, I guess, almost 50 metres. There you see the time clock. South's lead by four points as they have for about 10 minutes. No score at either end of the ground. 13-10 to 12-12. Pressure kick this. Oh, is it ever? It's going to go close. It's Edwards ah, mark or a goal. Edwards. It's either Edwards mark or a goal. Edwards mark. What a game he's played. Oh, what a timely mark. I mean, that is 
he really has found just that little bit extra because I've been watching Craig Edwards closely throughout this quarter and he's had trouble lifting his boots. So, like the mark too, wasn't it? Yes. That's it's, pretty rough, isn't it? It's pretty been a Herculean performance. Yes. Tough, when they take a mark right in the square. One of the failings of our game, I believe. Nevertheless, he's kicked it and Souths lead by 10 points. They've now got every reason to go on with it. It would be a shattering experience, I would suggest, for them to lose it from here. But I would think it would take an enormous performance from East Fremantle to wrench it away from them. Edwards has two. Let's have another look at the mark. Big Craig Edwards at the square. The ball high from Grant. Edwards, number four in line, reaches over the top. Absolute desperation from Edwards there to pull it in. And they just wouldn't need to relax here, South. Ishimel, the past masters at running the four quarters out. And if South think they've got it one, they want to have another thing because Ishimel will take advantage of any slack from South Fremantle. There's still, I would think, seven or eight minutes to go. And they queue up to mark that, Keith. Bigger queue than the Greenwood TAB. There's the bounce. Gaddy, beaten by Durak. Shark by Bushel. Good raving. Kicks the half forward of oh, Waterman. Really took a great mark. Look at South Fremantle. They weight of numbers will win out. Mascos tackled by Broadridge. He's good enough to break away, though. Kicks towards the middle of the ground. Sam Brelo, Browning from behind. Still Browning goes. Chipping in on top of the football out there is Kickett. And that'll be a bounce. And again, a perfect example of desperation by both sides. 23 minutes gone in this last term now. 10 points in favour of the Bulldogs. They're always hard to beat at Fremantle, no matter what position they are on the ladder. Gaddy and Durak down to Bushel. Jeff Sockers it forward. Kick it, trapped it. Tackled by Bushel. Again, the ball's tied up. Oh! oh! That is dynamite! Umpire ball. He's given the kick to Bushel. Oh. Gee, was fighting as, as hard as anyone could to do something with it. Bushel kicks the half forward. In front, good strong mark, the worst ball. He, he's shifted above injury, hasn't he? Out the playing this cool now. Kick towards the wing. Pollard, great mark, Eric. Left centre wing for South Fremantle. Pollard brothers have all contributed today. Short pass is on. Possession game. Brother of game. Lucy Mantle's game. If the Pollard. possession game is on, I think. Simic is loose. He goes into Geary, though. That'll do. Left half forward, what a good game he's played too. Nine marks, 21 kicks to his appearance. Worst ball in the pocket. Edwards. Across the ground he goes. Out comes Gatti. Thank you very much. Wraps it up. 40 metres out. South are playing like winners for mine. 25 minutes gone. Gatti is going to take all the time in the world. Today he's already kicked two. Taken some tremendous marks. And his uh, strength against Baxter has been worth going a long way to see. There goes the drop punt. Looks good. Great goal. Oh, Jack the... Romano has got to win this derby. The big fella's wrapped. Look at him. Oh, why wouldn't you be? He's like a big praying man is running down the field. <laughs> he really squashed Morris Rioli. That's one of the last goal. goals he's ever kicked in his career. Number 44. And he is absolutely wrapped. South Romano 15 goals, 10. East Romano 12-12. And we go into time on three goals today to Gordon Gatti. And the margin on the scoreboard now, 15-10 is 100. So the margin, 16 points in favour of the Bulldogs. South Fremantle forwards will panic. His co-forwards will panic every time he kicks a goal now. He's got to, to jump in their laps like that. Durak trying to get the ball out of the centre. Eventually, Jeff does. Hurry kick to the half-forward line. Punched away in desperation by Mascos. Was good play. McDonald's hand pass goes to Bushel. Bushel's to Broadbridge. He wasn't looking. In goes Broadbridge. Was he pushed? No, they're letting throw. him go. <laughs> throw has been seen. Dead set throw. Unlucky, but the umpire right there looking at the whole thing. Souths have done enough for mine. 16 points is the margin now. We're into time on. They go to the outer side of the ground, and here's Scotty Waters again. What a magnificent performance from him this afternoon. Perhaps the performance that has set up these, this victory as the ball goes out of play at right half forward. He's a satisfied man. Well, he's pretending to look cool. He has he's every beaming, reason to be proud crazy. today. Absolutely beaming. Edwards interfered with by Durang. 
Craig Edwards. Gets to his feet in a very tired fashion, as well he might. And uh, he will put this ball as far into the South Fremantle forward line as he possibly can. And that's exactly what he's indicating. The ops to go short. Fooled everyone. Graham kick it. Dro dropped into the hole. And he has the ball. Kick it. Midway between the centre of the ground and half forward. Again, Edwards unattended. Now, Edwards is out on the right half forward flank. Oh, they've gone straight across the ground to Collard and got away with it. Just wasting time now. They've probably wasted two minutes here, so it hasn't been a bad tactic, but they wouldn't want to lose possession. They should have done more with it than that, too. That hurt. Yes, it did. Kick it, applying the tunnel foul. Comes to Collard, who went without it. Back he comes again. He was off balance, tried to get through Girac. Picked up by McLean. McLean to the outer side of the ground. Jeff has it. Going past him is Quill, but he opts to come down the centre of the ground, and East Fremantle really have no option but to do that. He kicks short and has found a teammate in Waterman. Not much movement on the East Fremantle forward line. In fact, there's only four players up there. Sterrett and Bayless are two of them. Sterrett gets to it first. Went without it. Didn't, couldn't get it out of play. Bayless picks it up, puts it back to centre wing, back into no man's land. After it goes Geary. First to it was Waterman. Waterman still running his heart out for East Fremantle, close to the line, did well. Hurried kick to Baxter. Baxter's at left centre wing, he's tired too. Hand pass to Jeff. They're coming from all directions and Jeff is caught holding the ball. Play on is the call now, and here is the death knell for East Fremantle. Waters to the 50 metre line. He will go for goal, and it's going to be close. Gaddy is there. Durak did well. Comes to Collard, is tripped. Collard, the goal will stand if he's kicked it. No, free goal kick. player indicates that it was touched. Free kick. So the free kick will be taken. Collard was tripped in the pocket. You saw it. The guys have done a great job today, Walt. Yes, they have. Derek Collard from right full forward. Fairly acute angle. It's not as acute as it looks because of the shape of this ground. But it's still a fairly awkward angle. Ground shaped a bit like you now that I look at it. <laughs> After a bad one. There goes the shot at goal from Derek Collard. And South Fremantle win the Derby, the Foundation Day Derby, by 22 points. Well, that margin belies this game to a certain extent. The biggest margin of the game is the final margin. A magnificent game of footy. South 16 10, 106 have defeated East Fremantle 12 12, 84, and have kept the WAFL competition alive. Good on your wall. So let's run through the goal scorers very quickly for you. For South Fremantle, Gaddy kicked three, two apiece to Grant, Collard and Edwards, and singles to Rioli, Geary, Worsfold, Bayless and Sambrano. For East Fremantle, Pete three, two to Broadbridge and Sterrett, and singles to Miller, Amaranti, Bushel, Cole and Durak, Ken. Your top three possession getters for both sides. For South Fremantle, Scott Waters, 10 marks, 31 kicks and six effective hand passes. Richard Geary, 9 marks, 21 kicks. Sam Brelo, 11 marks and 16 kicks. Craig Edwards, 11 marks and 16 kicks. For East Fremantle, uh, there we have Broadbridge had 13. Waterman finished up with 18, a good hard trier all day. And then we had uh, Miller with 11. Uh, they didn't have very many high kick getters. Uh, Baxter had 10, but he had 12 effective ruck knockouts and five effective hand passes. But Waterman with 18 kicks was their leading kick getter. And Sterrett had 14, but he was held kickless in the final quarter. But Waters certainly uh, set the example for South Fremantle this afternoon. Thanks a lot, Ken. And he was well backed up by that man you just saw, Mark Sambrello. Keith, your top players for both sides. Well, for South Fremantle, they had a lot more good players than East Fremantle had. But I thought Watter's best man on the ground, a superb performance. His second quarter was quite outstanding. Edwards, uh, a magnificent Herculean performance, I think Wally called it. And I've got to support that all the way. Magnificent performance. Sam Brelo, Brad Collard, Sumich, Rioli, Geary, Free Fremantle, Broadbridge, Waterman, Peak, Baxter, Edgar and Sterrett. Magnificent game of football. One of the best you've seen all season? Best game I've seen for several seasons, and uh, I think Fremantle...